We'll be kicking off for the San Diego Chargers. The Cowboys have won the toss of the coin, and the Cowboys employing a new return man this week in Gary Allen, number 31, who joins Timmy Newsom at the goal line. As Charles Candy mentioned on the NFL Today, the field in less than outstanding shape. We had about a half inch of rain on Friday night. They didn't cover it until early Saturday morning. Then San Diego State played a football game here in the drizzle and rain yesterday afternoon. Well, it is very muddy in spots. With a slight threat of rain, although right now, trying to peek out through the clouds. Berniska kicking off to Allen, former Houston Oilers. Back to the 10, 15, 20. Allen goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at the power Dallas offense, number two scoring offense. In the National Football League, Ron Springs been a key man this year, according to Tom Landry, who this week called him the brightest spot in the Cowboys this year. He's had an outstanding season so far, and complemented by a cast of veterans. Kurt Peterson was a questionable starter coming into this game because of back spasms, but he is starting for the Cowboys at the right guard position. And, of course, they'll alternate guards with the plays. Herbert Scott and Howard Richards on the left side. marked at the 24-yard line. It is first and 10 for the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys have never been 10 and 1 before in their history, and they're trying to do that today. And Danny White on a hot streak. Coming off great games. Statistically against the Giants and the Eagles. It is Springs on the first carry of the afternoon. He gets it across the 27. Pick up the three. It'll be second down at about seven as we look at the Chargers defensive line. They have shifted from a four-man line last year to a three-man this year. Gary Johnson having a bit of a trouble uh, adjusting to the three-man front. The linebackers, two rookies on the inside. Mike Green, a ninth-round choice from Oklahoma State, and Billy Ray Smith, the number one pick from Arkansas. And the top defensive players selected in the draft in the secondary. Also, two rookies in Gil Bird and Danny Walters at the corner positions. Second down, seven. Dallas from its 26. Dorsett cuts to the 30. Up to the 35. Has the first down at the 36-yard line. Vintage Tony Dorsett as Gil Bird came up from the secondary, number 22, to make the stop on the Cowboy runner, but not before he picked up 11 yards on the play. Tony needs 130 yards rushing to reach 1,000 for the sixth time in his seven-year NFL career. He is currently the ninth leading rusher in the history of professional football. And with 115 yards, he could reach the 8,000 mark for his career. First and 10, Cowboys at their 36. the split backfield back to the iron the Cowboys may have taken up too much time 30 second clock is run down and we got the delay of game indication from the referee Pat Haggerty so that will cost Dallas five go to stick the Cowboys as you see the play shuttle it always do that little shift uh, with their offensive line before they set down well their offensive line lines up in a two-point stance initially with elbows on the knees then when the quarterback calls a cadence a certain phase of the cadence they flex upward and then shift down through a three-point stance and it disguises the shift in the backfield blocks vision the other thing it does it tends to force the defense to line up quickly because they might go on an up stance let's see if they do it on this play let's see here now see the lineman there no they win in an up stance on first and 15 white under pressure dumps it off to ron springs who can't hold it Feeling the hot breath of Lyndon King, number 57, the left outside linebacker for the Chargers who made the hit on Springs. It'll be second and 15. So that time the uh, Cowboys did not employ that uh, little shift they do in the offensive line. No, they went from a two-point stance that time, and that's why the defensive people have to be ready to go. It's an advantage for the Dallas offense. It's a good technique. It takes a long time for coaches to discipline their offensive linemen to do it properly. Why don't other teams do it? I think because of the discipline factor, and it's part of the Dallas philosophy. They're, I don't. I can't think of another team doing it right now. Second down. Just over 15 yards needed for the first down. Cowboys from there, 31 springs up the middle to about the 35-yard line. His Charger fans haven't had much to cheer about here in recent weeks with four losses in a row. Coriel has 
never lost five games in a row with this club. Four was his longest losing streak, and that was in his first year back in 1978. This is a capacity house. 52,000 is what they see here, but they're adding on 12,000 seats to the right side end zone. Third down, Dallas needing 12 for the first down. Nose of the ball just inside the 35. Shotgun. White with good protection. Great catch at the 49-yard line by Butch Johnson, or rather Drew Pearson. Drew Pearson having a great year. They're back there in the shotgun. San Diego Chargers are going zone defense. Pearson number 88 will appear right at the corner of your screen. See him peering in there right now? He found the zone, got it in there. Great throw, and look how he hung onto that football. Not every receiver can hang on to the ball like that in a crowd. And for a guy as small as he is, he does a tremendous job over the middle. He takes a lot of punishment. That's a first down for the Cowboys at their 49. Dorsett takes the pitch and is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Now this Charger defense has been much maligned here for the last few years, but they did go some for defense in the draft this year. Two of their three picks in the first round were for defense. Both are starting. Billy Ray Smith, number 54, who you see there, and then Gilbert, number 22, and they've come along here in recent weeks. They have seven of their starters that have three years or less experience, Frank, and they're playing hard. That play was a real fine defensive end play by Gary Johnson, number 79, the veteran who really hasn't fit into that 30 defense yet. No gain on the play, second and 10 for the Cowboys at their 49. There's that little shift once again. Dorsett, the only running back. He gets the carry. Gets a block from Donovan, but not enough. And he's tripped up behind the line of scrimmage by Bird, who came through from the left side cornerback position to drop him for a loss of four back to the 45-yard line. Mr. Gilbert, a freshman walk-on in college out of Lowell High School in San Francisco. Here he is, a number one draft choice coming into pro football. Quite a contrast. Don Coriel has taken these Chargers to four playoffs in a row. And Bird getting a baptism under fire in the National Football League this year as a starting quarterback. It's been an area that the Chargers uh, have been weak. In fact, they traded their two starters from last year. Third down, let's call it 13 for the first down. Dallas from their 45. White. Sideline throws incomplete on the far side. Intended for Butch Johnson this time. Dallas will be punting. Good coverage by the uh, nickel back there, Ruben Henderson, number 20, a former Chicago Bear. Yeah, they just picked him up, and they gave it a draft choice for him this year, and then these two young rookies come along that they drafted, and they're starting in front of him, but he's a fine football player, and he does a good job in nickel coverage for him, as he just demonstrated, Frank. The deep man is James Brooks. The best all-purpose yardage man in the National Football League for the last couple of years. He does it all for Returns kicks in excellent fashion. Snap is low. And Daddy White, you notice, is still the Cowboy putter as John Warren is injured. That takes a Cowboy hop inside the 20. Field it at the 17-yard line. And what a shot that Brooks took that finally knocked him out of bounds at the 17. Angelo King and that special teams expert, Bill Bates, both of them hit him about the same time. It's a wonder he got up. 40 yards on the punt, three on the return. There's, There's Bates. I love those kind of players. They excite me just to watch them walk. Rather warm, rather humid afternoon here in San Diego with the temperature around 80 degrees and the threat of rain, although a slight threat it is, uh, in the air right now. Chargers go to the offense for the first time. Ed Luther replacing Dan Fouts. Four-year man. Been understudying Fouts for the last four years, but hasn't seen much action. It comes out thrown to Chandler. West Chandler at the 15-yard line up to the 17 for a pickup of five. Take a look at the high-powered San Diego Chargers offense, still number one in passing in the National Football League. Luther, of course, the key man at the uh, quarterback position. We're going with a double tight end setup, the way things stand right now. And Chuck Muncy, the lone running back, Pete Holohan, is one of those tight ends. And the other, of course, is Kellen Winslow, perhaps the premier tight end in all of football. Also, a young man by the name of Andrew Gissinger, and at the right tackle position, who has replaced Russ Washington, who is a regular for 15 years. The Charger offensive line. Second down, six for the Chargers at their own 21. Muncy. 
across the 25 up to the 27 yard line. Now let's show you the Cowboy defense. Interesting thing about the front four as you look at them, all four of these men were all pros in the NFL at one time or another during the course of their career. All four of them got the course with Baltimore one time. The linebackers, veteran crew there, anchored by Bob Brunig in the middle. And the deep backs for the Cowboys. You've got names such as Everson Walls trying to become the first man ever to lead the NFL in pass interceptions three years in a row. Third down, Chargers still need one for the first down. And they're 27. Chuck Muncie caught behind the line by Michael Downs, number 26, and is dropped for the loss of two or three on the play, and that'll set up a punting situation. Geez, I'm sort of disappointed they tried to run outside when they only needed a foot for the first down, especially with a back that size, but it must be due to the game plan, and they're going right by the game plan right now. As the game moves along, they may change your thinking on short yard situations in a tackle. Maury Buford is the San Diego punter. An eighth-round draft pick out of Texas Tech last year. The Cowboys are employing a new punt returner today. In Gary Allen, number 31, who's replaced Rod Hill. Hill been running a little bit too much east and west instead of uh, north and south, according to head coach Tom Landry. Yeah, that's, a, that's a return type ball, Frank. Allen at the 17, 20, 25 across the 30 to the 34 yard line now for an nfl reports let's go to brent musburger in new york brent. frank the redskins have scored quickly on the giants and it's john riggins of the redskins powering in here for his 15th touchdown of the season the skins are up by seven points let's go back to frank and dick well, that may be a long afternoon for the New York Giants. Oh, I know. The Redskins are so efficient right now offensively. Everything they do, they just move the ball methodically down the field. Uh, ball control type plays, running in, passing. They're tough to stop. Redskins, one game behind the Cowboys in the NFC East. The punt, by the way, by Buford, 58 yards. Nice return of 17 by Gary Allen. And a Dallas first down at the 34. White out to Tony Hill. 35 up to the 40 and bumped out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So he got six on the play. And it'll be second down and four. Lyndon King and Gil Bird collaborating on the stop. This was a little quick screen where they faked to the running back up inside. Now see the man inside the slot. Watch inside the slot, number 88. Now he got the ball. He's the lead blocker on this play. See him? Come on, knock him down. He didn't get a good enough block right there. Tony Hill thinks he doesn't he isn't paid to block anybody out there. Right. Uh -huh. He can catch it. Oh, yeah. And actually, he's a good blocker as a wide receiver, too. Second down, four. Cowboys at their 40. No score. Still in early in the first period of play. Nothing there. As the middle of the Chargers defensive line collaborates on the stop on door set. Maybe he got a tough yard out of that one, but certainly no more than that. Woody Lowe, number 51, and Lyndon King, number 57, the outside linebackers on the stop. Frank, I was really impressed on the practice field Friday with the intensity and the enthusiasm that the Chargers practiced with. I mean, they really work. You, you would never read this squad as having only won three football games. You'd think they'd won eight football games the way they work. That's a salute to Don Coriel, really. This defense has done a good job. And by the way, it is tutored by Tom Bass, who used to be the defensive coordinator at Tampa Bay under John McKay. Switching to the 3-4 this year. Pass is blocked, caught by Springs on the rebound, but dropped for the loss back at the 33-yard line. Miles McPherson, number 24, came in there, got the hands up, and White gets credit for a pass completion. It's tough to bat a pass back here in the shotgun formation because you get there deep so quickly, but there it is. It's not batted by a lineman. It's batted by a defensive back. See right there, and he makes the tackle on Ron Springs, who makes his reception. He didn't expect to have that ball drop in his hands. That sets up fourth and 11. And back to do the punting is Danny White. White kicking for the third week for the Cowboys. That's the first down, the punt is blocked. This will be running for a touchdown, but there is a penalty marker down on the play. Number 55 for the Chargers, Gary Nelson, a former Cowboy.
He's back there punting right now. You can see he's forming the ball, maybe taking a little too long, but this guy was turned loose on the line of scrimmage. Miles McPherson, number 24, defensive back. Now Derry Nelson, number 55, picks it up. He's a running back. He puts it in the end zone. Whew, are they excited in this stadium right now? But Nershka is on to try the extra points. What a series of downs for McPherson. He was the guy who blocked the pass on right, and now he blocks the punt, and Nelson scores. 21 yards on the punt return for the touchdown. Interesting note on Derry Nelson, the man who... Uh, Scored the touchdown. He was a Cowboys number four draft pick a couple of years ago who was released and later picked up by the Chargers. And we welcome all of you back to San Diego Stadium where the Chargers have just electrified this capacity crowd by blocking a Danny White punt and running it in 21 yards for a touchdown. Gary Nelson doing the honors. Welcome particularly to those of you who have been watching the Green Bay Minnesota game and that uh, division is certainly tightened up now with the Packers beating the Minnesota Vikings and for those of you who joined us too late to see the block punt we'll show it to you after the kickoff. Benerska. This one to Timmy Newsom at the one yard line. Newsom up to the 10 15. Past the 20 still on his feet at the 25 and has finally dropped. Oh, the 28. Well, let's see if we can uh, figure out where the coverage broke down here on this punt. I think it broke down on the left side of the protection. Now look to the left side right there. Here he comes. See him right there. Came right by the center, right up the middle, right there. Boom. He stretches out real nice. Hits that point about nine yards in front of that original lineman position. Derry Nelson, 55, picks it. Oh, come on, Danny. Tackle that guy. Didn't want to tackle him. They don't pay him to tackle. <laughs> Touchdown. You, I mean, can you think of anything that's a bigger throw for a linebacker than to score a touchdown? Especially against a team that drafted it. <laughs> First and 10, Dallas from its 28 yard line. White undaunted, comes out, throw it. Springs, 30 35, and out of bounds near the first down marker at the 37 yard line. We've got just over six minutes left to play in the opening period here at Jack Murphy San Diego Stadium with the Chargers leading the Cowboys 7 0. These two teams have only played twice before in regular season, once here and once in Dallas, and the Cowboys have won both. You know, Danny Walters over at the right corner position, number 23, was crowding Drew Person at the breaking point about 12, 15 yards downfield. I wouldn't be surprised to see Drew try to go behind him for a big one. Second down, one. Dallas at its 37. Cowboys playing it conservative, going for the first down, and they should have it. Everything in order. Now watch Cosby, number 84. Now watch him. He's going to go in motion and try to get to the point of attack as a lead blocker rather than a fullback in the eye. See him going there now? He's looking for the nose guard. Bang, he got a nice block on him right there on Rick Ackerman, number 91. He did his job, but it broke down other places. Ackerman playing a nose guard for the first time this year, normally a defensive end. That's the advantage of that one back position. That big tight end is utilized really as a fullback. First and 10 Cowboys at their 39. Danny White. Intended for Springs, had his hands on it, couldn't hold it at the 41-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Andre Young, number 49, back there defending, almost made a great catch. Yes, he was covered tightly by Andrew Young, number 49, a strong safety. See him crossing the formation, there's two people crossing. Now, you look right in the middle of the screen. There he appears. He's got about a step on him, but it was just about an inch off his fingertips, and he couldn't hang on to it. It has been just about 10 years since the Cowboys last had a punt blocked and returned for a touchdown. It happened against the Redskins back in 1973 by Ken Stone. I've seen it to do it to, I've seen the Cowboys do it to other teams, including the Eagles. Second and 10. Dallas for its 39. You can see Springs particularly getting muddy already in the goo out there. Drew Pearson making the catch at midfield beyond the first down marker. Pearson with his second catch of the day. Danny Walters, the rookie from Arkansas, number four draft pick back there defending. There's a young man that Don Coriel is uh, very proud of. He leads the club at interceptions with four.
he really has been a, a pleasant surprise. The number four draft choice, they knew he was a good football player, but they didn't anticipate him starting. That's why they had traded for Reuben Henderson. Arkansas has been good to the Chargers down through the years, going all the way back to Lance Oworth. Provided them with a lot of stars, of course, their Walters, Billy Ray Smith this year. First and ten from the 49. Intended. Should be a penalty on that. Should be a penalty on that. They called it. There is a marker down. You'll see this is the wide receiver trade. He's in a flat block. Back block. That's a hard one. That is tough, right? right? Prior to the reception of the ball. That's not legal. Let's see what they call. Yeah, they call it. Yeah, number 80. Against Tony Hill. While they march it off here, we'll give you a rundown of the scores that we have so far. Several games still in progress, of course. Late starting games along with this one. These are finals. The Eagles lose their fifth in a row. Second time this year to the Bears. of uh, 10 yards, walked off back to the 40-yard line. America's Tom. Houston over Detroit. How about that? The Houston Oilers got finally it. Won that super? Not that I want to see Detroit beat, but it's great to see a losing team finally get their first win. And this may surprise a few people. New England put it on Miami pretty good. 17 to 6. It is first and 20. Cowboys at their 40. Having a tough time getting started. Dorsett out to the 41-yard line. These Chargers are fired up. You can feel the intensity and the tempo with, uh, all the way up here in the press box. Pick up of just a couple of yards on that play. Here's another final. St. Louis in a bit of an upset, beating Seattle. Roy Green had four touchdown passes for the Cardinals in that one. For, uh, receptions, actually. And Buffalo beating the Jets 24-17 to as Joe Walton's longest year continues. Kansas City topping Cincinnati 20 to 15. That should pretty well bring you up to date on the games that are final. There are several going on right now. Second and 19. White. Little drop off to Spring. Well covered at the 43 after a gain of a yard. And those muddy white shirts are swarming all over the place. They really are playing around. He really wanted to throw the ball to Tony Hill on about a 15-yard curl pattern downfield. But the underneath coverage by the linebackers took it away, and he had to lay it off in a short game. White has put it up nine times, completed six. Springs coming off an excellent week last week against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. Kind of a one-man gang, catching the ball, running it very well. One of the big reasons I think Springs is uh, fired up, he's got his contract problems behind him. He signed a nice, nifty new contract about a month ago. Third down, 17. Dallas at its 42. Three and a half minutes remaining in the opening period. White, sideline throw intended for Timmy Nusa. And again, the Cowboys will be punting. Really, now you're going to see that Carlos Bradley, number 50, is isolated on the one and one See him play him inside out right now. Now Newsom, number 30, breaks to the left of your screen. But the ball is just swung a little bit too wide. A little bit too wide. That's just a passing error, not a receiving error. Danny just a little bit off. But you know if he keeps throwing, that it thinks they're going to start going positive because he's too good a passer to keep throwing incomplete passes. White punting and a new return man for the Chargers, Josea Fortune who played his college football at Rice, waiting for this one to come down out of the stratosphere. At the 10, 15, 20. And knocked out of bounds at that point. He was picked up when the Chargers lost Roger Carr due to injuries and activated just the last couple of weeks. Once again, it was Bill Bates who made the stop for the Dallas Cowboys. We've got a timeout here at Jack Murphy Stadium with the Chargers leading the Cowboys 7-0. Get a chance here to watch Banzai Billy Bates at work of the Cowboys. Number 40. See him working inside out on the return man. And then here comes the oldest man on the team, number 44, Bobby Newhouse, in there doing the same thing that a rookie's doing. That shows the great character by both of these people. The old man, not old, he's 33, just a kid, really. First and 10 for the San Diego Chargers, who lead in this game, despite the fact they haven't picked up a first down yet. Ed Luther. Protection is good, going to Charlie Joyner. Down the middle, Bob Brody. 
Got his hands on the ball and tipped it away. You're talking about guys who, uh, who've who been around a while. How about this fella? This guy is really something special. You know, the other day when I walked in the locker room, Frankie says, Coach, you going to go back into coaching? I said, I don't have any plans. We said, I said, why do you ask that? And he says, well, just in case I wanted you to know that I can still play in the case they think I'm too old around here, I have another place to go. <laughs> He's also a very superstitious guy. He rides to every game with Sid Brooks, who is the equipment man for the San Diego Chargers. Every game he has to come with it. Second and ten. Chargers at their own 18-yard line. Luther to throw it, completes the short throw to Muncie, very close to the first down at the 28-yard line. Chuck Muncie, who of course is one of the top players uh, in the league with the New Orleans Saints, one of the high draft picks when he came into the league originally and tra tra traded several years ago to the Chargers, and he is their main man in offense. Mike Hageman making the stop. It'll be third down and a yard needed for the first down. Muncie is the horse of the Chargers horse and pony act. The pony, of course, is, uh, is uh, James Brooks situation much like Riggins and Joe Washington with the Redskins. On third and one, they'll throw. It's Handler, 30, 40, and dragged out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Dennis Thurman finally made the stop. This is one of the few teams where third and one is a passing situation. Yeah, this is a passing down, third and one. That's long yardage. Here it is, a little short pitch pass now in the one-on-one -on -one situation with Dennis Thurman. Now, you'll have to remember that this guy, number 89, West Chandler, was a running back as well in college, averaging 5.8 yards a rush as a college running back. So he can run with a football. A 20-yard pickup on the play, and the Chargers have their first first down of the afternoon at their own 46-yard line. Just over two minutes left in the opening period. I think we'll see a lot of those short passes, Frank. Now Chandler comes out momentarily, and Luther back to throw it. Wants to go long, and he does. Airs it out for Duckworth at the goal line. Almost intercepted. Well defended by Michael Downs of the Cowboys for an NFL Today report. Let's go back to Brent Musburger in New York. Frank, here's the play that knocked the New York Jets completely out of the championship picture in the AFC East. From the shotgun, Joe Ferguson of the Bills sends Cribs out, gets him isolated on a linebacker, winning touchdown with just 24 seconds to go. Let's go back now to Frank and Dick. I tell you, the Jets uh, may need a team psychiatrist more than anything else. With all that talent, you wonder how they can't be winning. Well, sometimes we all do as coaches, and I think spectators and fans and uh, news media people uh, overrate somebody. Second and ten for the Chargers at their 46. Luther going to Kellen Winslow. His first catch of the day takes the ball across the 50 and down to the 47-yard line of the Dallas Cowboys. Bill Bates made the stop. Bates lines up as uh, really almost a middle linebacker, doesn't he, in that 4-0 uh, defense? Well, when they're in a nickel defense, he lines up on the man in the backfield, regardless of where the man is lining up. If, if the man is in a fullback position, then he looks like a middle linebacker. If he's over in a halfback position, then he looks like an outside linebacker. I got a letter from somebody about Bates a couple of weeks back after we did a Dallas game, so I shouldn't refer to him as a kamikaze, because that's a one-shot guy, as a kamikaze. He takes a lot of shots. Third and four from the 48 of Dallas. Luther, pull it downfield, almost picked off by Thurman. It was intended for Chandler, but Chandler never got near the football. What do you think happened there? I think there was a breakdown in communication there. Dallas Cowboys were in their nickel defense. I think the coverage changed. The quarterback knew what was happening, but the receivers didn't read the coverage as he did because, you know, this offense is very sophisticated. It's based on coverage. It's based on timing principles, and evidently someone made a mistake there. That's why you see the Chargers rarely get a sack. Well, they, they throw the ball in about two and a half seconds half the time. Their offensive line leads the NFL in least number of sacks allowed with 13. Bunting situation here for San Diego. And Maury Buford in to kick for the second time. Allen is deep. He bobbles it. Bates tried to get to it to block it, couldn't. And we got a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Bates held up a little at the line of scrimmage, and when he saw it bobble it, then he really went after it. What happens in this situation, the punting rhythm changes when the punter drops the ball or fumbles it, and then linemen are used to a specific punting rhythm and head off. An eligible man, downfield, number 51 on the offense. That's it, Pat. You're right. See what happened? He left early. Let's see if we can see this on a replay. An eligible man. Offense number 51, 
Decline, first down. Bobbled the ball, he bobbled it. Now see, that changes the timing as to when those linemen can release. It took him longer and people were downfield. Here's another good shot at his Frank. Look at this. See, he had plenty of time, but the linemen are releasing, expecting the ball to be punted. Well, Dallas is apparently going to uh, decline the penalty here. And they'll take over at the 20-yard line when we come back to Jack Murphy Stadium right after this. A bit of sunshine and a lot of clouds hanging over San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium as we go back to play with a minute and 15 seconds left in the opening period. And Dallas and its uh, customary opening quarter posture of being behind. Cowboys trailing San Diego 7-0 on a block punt and returned by Gary Nelson. First and 10 Cowboys at the 20. You're set in the one-back offense. Trying to get outside. Makes a good block. You know, we were talking about Tony Hill a minute ago uh, missing a block there. At that time, Tony Hill got a nifty block. This is what makes him so bad. But here's he's turning out in there. Oh, watch him. Now he's going to move back to the inside. He's going to pick that guy off right there. That allowed Tony Dorsett, number 33, to get outside one-on-one -on, -one on Bird, number 22. Then Lyndon King, 57, comes over to help out. Dorsett. That's what's so great about Dorsett. He, he's up inside. He can bounce all the way inside or outside in that running formation. He picked up five on the play, leaving the Cowboys with a second and five from their 25. Right. Protection good. Dorsett underneath. 25, 30. Up to the 32. Took the punishment as usual, but uh, picked up the first down at the 33-yard line. Gil Bird, 22, and Lyndon King, number 57, on the stop. This was an example of the line flex. Oh, we just missed it, darn it. We missed it. The line flexed, and San Diego defensive line jumped offside, thinking they were going on a quick count. Well, nice little back. pass. He's back there with a lot of time. Now he's going to lay it off to his right. Got back just in time, so no penalty flags down, and the Cowboys have a first down at the 33-yard line. to the 48 15 yards and another first down and a fine catch by the man now, this is a great shot now look at him isolated one-on-one -on, -one on gil bird this is 80 tony hill gil's got him covered outside now he sticks him right there comes back now watch him come back to the ball see him come back to the ball that's how that pass was completed very good job good job of coverage actually that is the end of the first period of play here at jack murphy stadium in san diego with the Chargers leading the Dallas Cowboys 7 to nothing and a capacity crowd approving. Along with Dick Vermeil, welcome back to sunny San Diego. Cowboys have the football. They have a first and 10 at their 47-yard line. They trail 7 nothing. Two tight ends, Frank. Last time they were in two tight ends, they threw a pass. Springs and Dorsett are the setbacks. Tony Dorsett caught behind the line of scrimmage. Defensive play by Keith Ferguson, number 76. Another criticism of this defensive line and that they're small. And Ferguson is actually a converted linebacker. What, about 240? That's, yeah, he's, that's light. He's stretching it to be 240 pounds, but they really like the way he plays. He was an offensive tackle his first year in college as a sophomore, then a linebacker his junior and senior year. And he's really on the light side, but as he bulks up, lifting the weight in their offseason program, they expect him to be a fine defensive end. Second down, 12 for the Cowboys after a loss of two on the play back to the 45-yard line. Dorsett has rushed eight times and picked up 14 yards. Flag is down. Hill cranks it up. He's got White cranks it up to Tony Hill. He's out of bounds at the 35, but the Cowboys may have been in motion. Illegal procedure against Dallas. Big Louie Kelcher is in there at nose guard right now. How would you like to be an offensive center and lined up and look and see a guy weighs 305 pounds sitting on your nose? Well, it's... Got the call here. Illegal procedure. Failed. Halt for a second. Up it. What was that? He failed to pause for a second. Why don't you explain that? Failed to pause for a second. Oh, in the shift in the backfield. They shifted to everybody that's making a movement other than a man in motion leaving the line of scrimmage must be totally stable in one position for one second or more prior to the snap. Second down, 17. Cowboys back at their 40. 
White with the deep drop. Going underneath with the pass completion, but trying to get a little bit of it back. Didn't get that much of it. Hitting Dorsett over on the far sidelines near the Cowboy bench. Good underneath coverage by the linebackers. Here's Billy Ray Smith, the number one pick from Arkansas. What a fine looking specimen. Earlier today, he was visiting with his father, of course, a 14-year-old pro football, 14 years of experience in the pro football is there. Look at that, what a pair. Of course, Billy Ray Smith uh, lives in the Plano, Texas, just north of the Dallas area. This is the first time that Billy Ray Sr. has seen his son play in San Diego. Third down and 11. Cowboys at the 46, crowd really getting into it now. White going long. Hill couldn't run underneath it, but he was behind Gil Bird, the cornerback, by two or three steps. I've been expecting him to go deep because they've been getting a lot of single coverage at the corner position, and they've been playing tight, contesting everything, and I've been expecting him to go ahead and try to go by him. Well, if the pass would have been there, that would have been six. Six points. You know what? On this soft turf, it's tough for a corner to make that tight pivot and really take off and sprint. He's got to be careful. White to do the punting for the third time today, and Hosea Fortuné. Fortuné was originally with the Oilers and was caught and picked up by the Chargers, who had all kinds of injury problems. Fumbles the ball! Loose football at the 17-yard line. Let's see who got it. Indications are that the... The first indication I got was that the Chargers retained possession, and they did at the 15-yard line. Bates doesn't like it. He's looking up for that football. Good concentration, but it slipped right through the hand. Nice contact there. Can't see the number on the jersey. He's making that contact. That's Fellows. There comes Bates, number 40, trying to finish him off. That was Fellows, number 27, making that shot on him. Chargers ball, first and ten at their 15-yard line. That's the time remaining in the second period of play. San Diego leading 7-0 on the strength of a block punt and returned by Gary Nelson. Muncie trying to get it outside and fights hard to get back to the line of scrimmage as the Cowboys jammed it up well. Larry Bethea, number 76 in there, along with two tall Jones. In the fourth period, Pittsburgh leading Baltimore 24-13. Washington over the Giants in the second period, 13 to 3. Big game in the NFC West and the 49ers out in front of New Orleans. Up in San Francisco and Denver leads the Raiders 10 to 3. Our score 7-0. San Diego. Second down 10 for the Chargers at the 15. Luther rolling out. Get a little more time. Completes the pass to Charlie Joyner at the 25-yard line. Now, there's one advantage of Luther that you have over Fouts in that he is more mobile and they can do more things with it. Look at old Charlie Joyner. That is a big, big pass reception for Charlie Joyner. He now becomes the NFL's seventh all-time receiver. Now, Ed Luther, number 11, is going to drop back and he's going to sprint to the right. One, two, three. Now, here he comes to the right. See him coming out with Dennis McKnight? The guard right there, number yeah, number 60. See him? He's off, actually the offensive center. Rolled out, thrown to his right. Here's Charlie. Tuck it away, Charlie. Boom, you're going to get hit. He's used to getting hit. Look at that. He just keeps right on going. Got thumped pretty good by Everson Walls. That was close enough for measurement, and the measurement indicated the Chargers didn't quite have enough for the first down. So they're looking at second now, and less than a yard. Close to a passing down. Don Coriel has been with this team since midseason of 1978. They lost four straight games that year. They've lost four in a row right now. And certainly one of the big reasons is this man not being in the lineup, Dan Fouts. He's not only a great player, he's a great leader. Third down, less than a yard for the first for the Chargers at their 25. Muncie has the first and more. It across the 30 to the 32 before Michael Downs, number 26, makes the stop. He does run hard. They already moved the fullback in the fullback position in motion. Now you can see big 63, Doug Rochelson coming around. Watch him. Boom, he gets a nice block right there. He cuts up inside. He's running. That's 240 pounds of running back right there. 
and he is so fluid when you watch him in the practice field. I coached against him a couple of years. Of course, I hated him then, Frank, but you look at him now and you see him moving. It's just unbelievable how a man that size can move. You so coached against him in college. Yeah. But he was with Cal. Luther with the sideline throw intended for Chandler, incomplete in front of the Dallas bench. A reminder, this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Diego Chargers and the National Football League is prohibited. Ed Luther coming into this game three touchdowns and 11 interceptions. He's actually at the bottom of the heap in the NFC passing statistics. Thus far, he has hit five out of nine for 48 yards. Second and ten from the 30. They go with the draw play. Muncie gets by the first wave. Bob Brunick finally stops him, but not before he picks up yardage to the 37-yard line. He had absolutely nothing there at the line of scrimmage. Wound up picking seven, and Muncie may have been shaken up. Muncie is hurt. That's all that Coriel needs is to lose him now. Well, he's had he's had a sore growing. He's had a very sore growing. Played a little last week. Now, you can see this is a draw play. See, they're all blocking his pass. You can see the hole open right there. Look at him. He looks for that point of the bench. Big man now. See, doesn't wrap him up. Who is that? Anthony Dickerson, 51. Didn't get him wrapped up. Boy, when you're 240 pounds, you can keep moving forward. Munsey trotting off the field. And he'll get a breather. He's the number eight rusher in the AFC with 610 yards coming into this football game. Third down, Chargers will need three for the first down with the ball spotted at the San Diego 38-yard line. Still 7-0. San Diego, 11 minutes left to play in the first half. Apparently a recurrence of that groin problem by Muncie, and they're checking it down to the field. Charlie Joyner in motion across the backfield. Stepped off on the far sideline and almost breaking it out there is Ernest Jackson. Jackson, rookie running back from Texas A&M coming out of the backfield, has the first down at the 46. Now he's coming in motion. Watch Joyner come in motion. He shortens the corner there, pulling the defense with him. Now you can't see that, but people are all following him over there. Now he's Ernie is outside. There was a nice block by Hulahan right there. He's outside and running, running clean. They like this Ernie Jackson. All they really need is experience. He's an eighth-round draft choice and led the Chargers in preseason rushing. First and ten, San Diego at their 46. It's only the third first down for the Chargers. Muncie right back in there and running high for another 10. He is a load. Ed Jones, number 72, finally making the stop. And leading the way was Kellen Winslow. Now you're looking right. You see the two big guards right there, both of them pulling right now. Now you see Ed White, number 66, up inside the hole. See him? 67, rather. There he is. Gets a nice block, and he's right up behind him. Here's Winslow split out as a wide receiver. Now he's got the point of attack block. He's on a defensive back, number 26, Michael Downs. He gets him blocked. Seven, eight yard game. Officials mark it at the Dallas 46, second and two. Muncie, not this time. Mike Hickman, number 58, got him behind the line of scrimmage and dropped him at the 50. That was a little jab counter play uh, by the one back in the backfield, and he was going to break back to his left under alignment pulling. But the linebacker was dogging, got penetration, and took too long. Eggman Hagen. comes out on the passing situations. Excellent against the run, and a teammate of uh, Tutal Jones in college at Tennessee State. Look how muddy it is out there. They're right now in one of the muddiest parts of the field. There's a muddy part at the 50 where they are, and then another one down about the 50 in the direction they're heading. Plus, these fields aren't set up for the wet weather. They're, they're not used to getting a lot of rain. Third and five. Luther to Joyner. Couldn't hold it. It was there. Rod Hill came over defending, but the pass was on the money for Charlie Joyner, and he doesn't drop many of those. What do you do with Kellen Winslow? How do you well, stop? what they normally try to do, and they use him in motion to try to get him off the line of scrimmage clean, but many times they're still going to deck him. Try to work him over. See one man belt him right there. Winslow gives him another little shot. <laughs> a little love tap in the back. That bait is tough, though. It doesn't bother him. Bates is uh, taking on a guy that's about a half a foot taller than he See, is. See, Kellen didn't like it either. And he gave him a little poke back. Yeah. 
Buford to do the punting. Allen chasing this one to the near sidelines, but out of bounds, somewhere between the 10 and the 20. Closer to the 20. They're going to mark it right at the 19, looks like. Fans don't like the spot that the official has given it right now. Cowboys will get it. They're going to put it at the 20. Nine minutes, seven seconds left to play in the first half here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. It's still San Diego 7 and Dallas nothing. The lights are on here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego with Nick Vermeil. This is Frank Lieber. Dallas Cowboys have a first and 10 at their 20-yard line. They trail 7 nothing. With nine minutes and seven seconds left to play in the first half. White handing off to Dorsett, who's having a tough time getting on track. White in the passing department has hit 9 out of 14 for 62 yards, but he's had some receivers open. He kind of gets the feeling when White gets it going, we may see something big. He'll have a shot. Here's Dorsett. He's being forced to run to the sideline and not given this great run cutback. Now see it? Watch the alignment flexes to go. See him flex? Now they're trying to disguise the alignment of the back by doing that. That's one of the things they're doing. Now here he is. He'd like to cut right back, but he can't do it. Mike Green, 58, was in the hole. See that? Now he's sliding the long line scrimmage, and the best way to defense him is keep him running parallel. Second and nine. Cowboys at the 21. They're close to the muddiest part of the field right now, back at the 20. This is the Springs. Across the 25. The first down marker is where he went out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it and whether they give the Cowboys the first down. Pretty good blocking along the way. Oh, the key is the block by the tight end to the right of your screen, number 84, Doug Cosby. Now watch him step out there and get a nice block on Ray Preston, number 52. Now watch him. He's going to stay after him. Now he's got him hooked. Don't hold him. That's it. He's not holding him. He got him hooked right there. If you hook that linebacker, you've got a chance to run outside clean. Not quite enough for the first down. It'll be third down and a yard. Cowboys at their 29-yard line, and the Chargers defensively giving them all they can handle so far this afternoon. Springs stood up straight at the line of scrimmage. He didn't get it. Left side of the Chargers defensive line, standing Ron Springs up, particularly Mike Green, number 58, the linebacker. The two linebackers did a great job. Billy Ray stood it up, and then Mike Green, number 58. Now see him hand it off. He's heading into work. See, now see, at number 58, hit it right up in the hole. Really stuck the play. Fine linebacking play by rookie Mike Green. Let's take another look from the end zone. Now watch the left linebacker, 54. He stuck it. Now here comes 58 up inside there, and he puts his helmet on him, and no first down. And the hand is for the Charger defense. They're really playing football, Frank. You know, I love that Mike Green, that number 58. Love those kind of guys. Here he is. A number nine round draft choice, and he's playing every bit as well as their first round draft choice. Well, Tom Bass, his defensive coach, says he may be the best ninth round pick in NFL history. Wes Chandler feels this one at the 30. We got a flag, gonna have a clip. Yeah. And I think uh, Chandler may have seen the flag, and he's probably said to himself, why punish my body? I'll just go out of bounds. Right. He's a great punt returner, this Chandler is. He has been, of course, since he's become a great wide receiver, they don't use him as often in that position, but he is really talented, that guy. That is the third punt returner the Chargers have used this afternoon. He has started the game with Brooks, then they went to Fortune. Now they've got Chandler back there. Billy used the hand, pushing the back on the return, number 22. You know, people sometimes say, why are the NFL games a little bit longer? I think one of the number one reasons are the penalties within the kicking game. Now you can see this. See it right there? There's pushing it back right there. Obvious. Very poor judgment. That was by the blocker. Gil Bird, number on, 22, the rookie number one draft pick. Just poor judgment on Billy Gil Bird. the hand, pushing the back on the return, number 22. Officials walk it off back to the 19-yard line, and the Chargers will put it in play with seven minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the first half. The block punt and return for the touchdown by Derry Nelson, the only score of the game so far. Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil. That's the time remaining in the second period. Chargers first and 10 at their 19 final score. As the Steelers put another one on their win streak, which has now reached seven by beating Baltimore. Muncie.
backed up behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of two on the play, back to the 17. This man was not always known for Air Coriel, was he? Well, he's always been known for a great offensive coach. Actually, maybe one of the guys that really developed the eye formation uh, all the way back up in Wenatchee Junior College up in Washington. But he's been able to do what he had to do to win with football. He had a great running attack, power eye, here at San Diego State in, in the 60s, early 60s, that were one of the best offenses in football, and he didn't throw the ball very often. There's no stranger to the Cowboys. He dueled with them for some five years when he was head coach of the St. Louis Cardinals. Second and 12 after the loss of two. Luther on the rollout being pressured. Randy White almost got a piece of him. Gets the pass away and a great catch on the far sideline in front of the Cowboy bench by Chandler. He caught that thing on Dennis Thurman almost sitting down. The whole key to this is the fact that he comes back for the football. Now watch him take off. He's a great sprinter, you know, has that tremendous speed. He's really pushing the defender deep. See him pushing right there. Now watch him work back. Watch him now work back to the line of scrimmage. Keep coming, West. Keep coming. Keep coming. See, that just makes it that much tougher for the defender to go ahead and close on him and make the play. And he knew where the first down marker was. You can't afford to crowd him, that's all. 14 yards on the play, and a San Diego first down at the 30-yard line. Luther. Charlie Turner with a one-handed grab at the 50. He went out of bounds at that point. That'll be another first down. 36 years old and still making catches like this. He must have been upset about the one he just dropped. Here he is sitting into his own. See him working in his own right there in between the two defenders. Look at him reach up there with that right hand. That was his own defense. No one covering him man to man. Zone defense. That's the third oldest receiver in football today. Fourth oldest all time. Still playing. He picked up 21. Actually, as you saw, he didn't go out of bounds, but he was in contact with one of the Cowboy players when he tumbled down. So that ruled him down at the 50 yard line. First down, though, San Diego. Luther. Throws it quick, intended for Chandler, and batted up in the air. Like Tutal Jones, might have got his hands on that. Tutal Jones leads the world in block passes. He may have more block passes than any defensive lineman in the history of the NFL. Well, that's his tenth one. He had nine coming into this ball game. He is a pain in the neck to throw toward because you know he's six foot eight. He puts his hands up. That makes him about eleven foot tall, and then he jumps, and it really is tough. The offensive tackle has to set short on him and try to keep him on the line of scrimmage. Locks out. A lot of daylight. Andy Kissinger is, has his hands full trying to set short on him. Second and ten for the Chargers from midfield. Muddy part of the field. Again, the pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage. It was Jones again. He yeah, got two for two. See, see Jones, number 72, the right side of your screen. Now watch him. Now watch him jump. Watch him jump. He's six foot eight. There it goes, playing volleyball. He gets a spike for that, doesn't he? <laughs> playing volleyball. It, well, take a look at what Ed Jones has done this year. He's made the Pro Bowl, all pro teams the last couple of years, and I think he's well on his way again. You know, he's a rhythm and blues singer, too. He's singing a little right now. Third and ten for the Chargers at the 50. Luther is now eight out of 15 for 90 yards. In trouble behind the line. Completes the pass downfield. That's a first down the 33-yard line as the pass completion goes to Pete Holahan. This is a broken pattern, really. You'll see the man going in motion, the defender chasing him. See that? Now he's pedaling straight back. Look at him looking to his left. Protection breakdown. See it break down his side. He's flushed to his right. Now he's going to lay it off out there, and this is just guts and effort right here. Michael Downs didn't get 26, didn't get him locked up. Houlihan, 88. Here he goes. He's just hanging on. He knew where he had to go to get that first down. Olahan is 6'4", 240, a third-year man from Notre Dame. High school quarterback. Playing as the second tight end with an injury to Eric Sievers. First and 10 at the 34. Luther. Olahan at the 15, 10, 5. And down to the 2. play first down at the four see there was a man in motion you could see it there initially now he's looking down the middle down the hole against this divided zone defense there he is he beats down there michael downs 26 down the hole he's one-on-one -on -one. darn near puts it in 
I really didn't see the total coverage that time, Brent. Black continues to roll with just over four minutes left to play in the first half. Chargers first and goal from the four. This is a good time to throw on the Cowboys down here. Muncie. Cuts back inside. We got a flag on the far side of the field. Penalty marker down. Cowboys are really tough down in this area in their goal line. They're tough to score on running. And we will follow Pat Haggerty, the referee, to get an indication. Offside against Dallas. That's one way to move the ball. Half the distance to the goal will move it from the four to the two. This has been an impressive drive. You had the one catch by Chandler, the sensational catch by Joyner, great catch by Holohan where you ran over Downs, and then the other catch by Holohan. Encroachment, number 54, lining up in the neutral zone. To me, Frank, that's all a reflection of the, the coaching staff on the sideline and preparation for the ball game and everything else. They are not throwing away this season. First down, goal to goal from the two. Muncie driving for the goal line. He's over. with the touchdown to make it 13 nothing. Here he come right at you now. You're going to have to make the play, Bruni. Here, look for him. Can't find him. There he is. Go make the play. But see, he overruns it. Once he gets back underneath him and Bruni overran him just a little bit. And you can't overrun that guy. He has to pick him square because he's so big. That's his ninth touchdown of the year. Ralph Benerska with the extra point attempt. Luther puts it down. He's got it. 14 to nothing, San Diego. Take a look at it from another angle. Here they're in an I formation, wing back set. We got a lead blocker coming in here looking for someone to block. He blocks number 24. Not nice block by Eric Severs, 85. He's still powering. Good forward body tilt. Touchdown. <laughs> drive of 81 yards and climaxed by Chuck Muncie who's played 45 games for the Chargers and scored 41 rushing touchdowns. That was the running back coach Ernell Durden talking to him right there. I worked with Ernell for four years. He's a fine coach. But Nerska with the kickoff hooks this one badly. Bounces down to the 15. Picked up at the 10 by Ron Fellows. Fellows cutting back upfield to the 15. Gets to about the 20 yard line. And that'll be a NCAA football on CBS got a big one for you, several big ones, but the biggest probably, Washington State and Washington. I mean, that means a Rose Bowl, doesn't that, it? That's a tough football game, regardless how the records are of either team. Of course, Washington has been winning for a long time, but Washington State's been playing competitive football. But that's like the Stanford, California game. That's like a USC, UCLA game. You never know who's going to win it. Saturday, 3.30 Eastern time, right here on CBS. Regional NCAA action. Our score, the Chargers 14, the Cowboys nothing. First and 10, Dallas from its 20. With 3.50 left to play in the first half. Danny White to throw it. The place of the Doug Cosby. First time he's gone to Cosby this afternoon and a first down at the 42. Now, interesting thing to point out. The Cowboys this year have been behind by 10 points or more four times which they've come back and won it starting with the Redskins. How about a team like the Chargers? Could they be so pumped up here that uh, conceivably they could let Dallas right back into this by well, losing their emotion? First off, you said it. Dallas has the confidence that they can come back and win because they've proved it. And you've got to be careful of giving, extending all your emotion and intensity in that first half and not having anything left in that second half. First and 10, Cowboys at their 41. Just over three minutes left to play in the first half. White. Blocked, intended for Tony Hill on the far side, and he was open. And Lyndon King, number 57, the linebacker, batted it down. Does the offensive linemen have to set shorter on the line of scrimmage or cut black those defensive people, or they're not going to get those short passes completed. King, the third year starter from uh, Colorado State. Watch the right, right to the left of your screen there. He's going to throw it. He's going to reach up. See, right up. They 
you've got to block that man a little bit lower so you keep his hands down. Second and 10, Cowboys at their 41-yard line. Danny White doing some motioning. Get Cosby set where he wants him. On second and 10. Over the middle, and in tough company. Cosby pulls it down for the first down at the San Diego 45. Going back to a tried and true target, and he is a big target at 6'4 and 230 pounds. You're going to see Cosby come off here now to the bottom of your screen. He's going to come off to the inside. He's going to work around number 54, the linebacker in the zone. Number 54, of course, Billy Ray Smith. You see him work around. He found a little hole. He settled down into it. And this is what Tom Landry has said about this guy. He really has a feel for where the areas are, and he uncovers himself well. That's a first down to San Diego, 45. White again going upstairs, intended for Pearson, and almost picked off. Ken Green, number 28, collided with Pearson and looked for a moment like Green had his hands on the football, but couldn't hold it. Kenny Green, the safety, uh, traded from St. Louis. He's a little slanting pattern. See him square in there? Get it to him. A little bit late. Ball's there a little bit late. Boom! Boy, that is tough to catch. You know, there are receivers, regardless of how good they are in the National Football League, don't like to run inside on that slant pattern because they get headaches many times going in there after him. Many times. Many times. But Pearson is not one of those. He'll run that pattern for you. Oh, he will. You have, All to, day get, long. You have to give Kenny Green credit for that, though. He will really captain one. Second and ten from the San Diego 45. Cowboys have not had a serious scoring threat here in the first half. That score set. 40. 35 and out of bounds at the 35 to stop the clock with two minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the first half. That, they were lucky that wasn't called. That was an illegal formation. Pearson was lined up on the line of scrimmage wider than the tight end and they both released. Being on the line of scrimmage is not illegal, but that tight end is no longer an eligible receiver. But the officials didn't pick that one up. So Dorsett having a rough afternoon so far trying to run the football on the receiving end of his third pass reception of the day for 24 yards. He's rushed nine times and has just 15 yards on the ground against this young Charger defense. The Chargers have only been given up 3.8 yards a run, so they're doing a good job. First down at the San Diego 35. Dallas trying to get on the scoreboard before halftime. Fake to Dorsett. White on the bootleg dumps it off to Springs there. Pass caught at the 33 and Mike Green, number 58, the uh, rookie linebacker from Oklahoma State. And we talked to Coriel yesterday, asked him why this guy wasn't drafted earlier, said he's maybe a little bit too small, but boy, are they happy to have it. Two-minute warning, going to both benches with the Chargers surprising the Cowboys, 14 to nothing. Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil. Two-minute warning here in San Diego. The Cowboys threatening really seriously for the first time in the first half. We'll have a second down and eight upcoming at the 33-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Last week in this very same situation against the Eagles, they were behind and in four plays right before the half they scored. It took a lot of wind out of the sail of the Eagles. coming from the Chargers. White dumps it off. And Dorsett finds it a little too hot to handle. Carlos Bradley was trailing him. He might have been looking at Carlos Bradley eye to eye and decided not to catch that one, friend. Could have been. I kind of doubt it, though. They were coming, weren't they? Oh, yeah. See, they're dogging everybody. Now, see, number, look at them. See, they're going in there. Number 51, Woodrow Lowe is rushing up inside. Everyone's there. Now he lays it off to the outside. Here he comes, inside out on that running back. Oh, just out of no. He didn't hear footsteps. He's too tough to hear footsteps. They want to, get a, little, they want to get a little closer, at least for a field goal shot. Are you looking at a 50-yard field goal out of a muddy spot if they have to kick it from here? Third down, eight from the San Diego, 33. White, protection is good. Sideline throw intended for Cosby is incomplete at the 20. Pass was just a little bit behind Cosby that time. Defending was Reuben Henderson, number 20. Really tight coverage by Reuben. You look at this great big guy rushing right there. Leroy Jones, number 68. He's as big as a house. Look at him. He's getting pressure in there, but now he gets the ball off. Now you can see this really tight. A little high and behind him. I've seen Cosby catch that one before. I've seen him catch it. I think he's probably a little disappointed he didn't. 
Rafael Septien will attempt a 50-yard field goal. He is 17 out of 20 on the year. Actually, the spot he'll be kicking from is not quite as muddy as the spot where he'll start his takeoff. He has 4 out of 13 in his career, meaning a 31% average successful from this distance. In the mud, it'll be tough. It is not long enough. And the Chargers will take over. And the crowd loves it. It has been a long year for the San Diego fans so far. The highlights have been few. But this first half certainly has to be one of them so far for a team that's used to winning, been to the playoffs four straight years, and right now working on a 3-7 and seven record, realizing they're out of the playoffs for all intents and purposes, but their pride is still there, and it's showing today. There's the man who is the architect of the San Diego defense, shifting them from a 4-3 to a 3-4. Tom Bass formerly had the same job at Tampa Bay. Interesting guy. He writes poetry, among other things. Very, very bright man. He went to San Jose State right before I did. Was stricken with polio in the mid-50s prior to Salt vaccine. But a great defensive mind, and his preparation paid off so far in the first half. Chargers first and 10 at the 31. Muncie on the carry. We get a flag, and I'm sure San Diego will be content to run out the clock here and go to the intermission 14 zip. These might be the only running downs of the game for the San Diego <laughs> offense. Holding against the Chargers will set them back. Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, you talk about a team that's minus its number one quarterback. Dallas, from appearances, looks like it has that letdown that we were talking about. Well, first off, San Diego Chargers are a good football team. They've had a lot of negative things go wrong this year. They've lost some momentum. But they're back strong. And the people are... are we have bloody. holding offense, number 80, still first down. Kellen Winslow. You well, saying? you know he has the hands to hold. Yes, sir. <laughs> Big hands. Yeah. But, you know, they're rallying around the quarterback. Plus, he's no longer a rookie. He's already started three football games. He's better. Getting used to the receivers. Muncie. Bates makes the stop over on the far sideline. Boy, I love Muncie that guy. goes out of bounds at the 23. Tom Landry loves him, too. I, heard, I understand that John Madden really gets excited when he watches this guy play. I, yeah, I know. You know, coaches take the credit for a guy like that. But you know where the credit goes? To mom and dad. They're the finest coaching staff. They, they inbred in something in, in a guy that, that, that makes him, you know, give that extra all the time. Coming up at halftime, and that's uh, very shortly. The NFL today, highlights, scores, upsets. We've got them for you. Brent Nerg will be around about a minute and 33 seconds from now. Second and 19 for the Chargers at their 23-yard line. Which is the one thing they didn't want to have to happen. Rod Hill picked off the interception, returned it to the 30, and the Cowboys are going to get another shot at it, and that may be a huge, huge mistake uh, for the Chargers. Even on long yardage, you think they'd run it. Well, you? this is an inexperienced throw. He shouldn't have tried to force this with the game in control right now. These are the mistakes you can't make. He tried to force the ball in between his own. See, he was covered short there in front right there and deep and he tried to hit the crease and didn't get it over the top of michael downs number 26. excuse me is that down no rod hill rod hill number 25. that's the first turnover in the football game we've got a timeout here in san diego The Dallas Cowboys have a golden scoring opportunity here with a minute 25 left in the half and all of their timeouts left. A first down at the San Diego Charger 30-yard line. Danny White 13 out of 22 for 109 yards. Long count play. White sending springs in motion. Rainbow intended for Tony Hill trying to reach it at the goal line and can't get to it. White thrown to a spot. That interception a moment ago was Rod Hill's second of the year. Gilbert back there defending. Cowboys defense has forced 14 turnovers in the last three games. They have, uh, as they say, gotten well on turnovers in recent weeks. Here's now. Richards coming in with yep. the play. That's the shuttle system that Tom Landry uses. Howard Richards and Herb Scott. 
Adams. Speaking of turnovers, here's how it looks on the year, and that's one reason that the Cowboys are 9-1, and one, and the Chargers are 3-7. and seven. That is heading into the ballgame today, and of course, uh, with the interception, they are now plus 10. Second and 10 from the 30. Take into the middle, out to Hill on the screen. 30, 25, and depth at the 24. Pickup of six, it'll be third down for Gil Bird once again, making the stop number 22. Now this is the same play that they ran earlier. A little quick screen, just a fake, little token fake up inside there. Now they flip it out there. He's going to get a block from the receiver. Now watch this. He's going to get a block right there. That's it, Drew. Get that block. Now he's looking for the lineman coming inside out. Almost got loose right there. Nice play by Bird, number 22. The rookie from San Jose State makes the stop. The Cowboys call time when we come back. They're third and four at the 23. Cowboys may be down 14 to nothing, but they look very confident as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Third down, a long three needed for the first down at the 23-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Just over a minute. Two timeouts left. Blitz. White gets it off. Completes it to Springs. First down at the 15. Boy, that is really tough to defense. That crossing pattern. Ron Springs coming out of the backfield. The wing back position. Be coming from the right part of your screen. There you can see the rush. Little cross charge there by the two defensive linemen. Here he is crossing the field. Running full speed. Throwing right on the money. Andre Young, number 49, making the play. In man-to-man -man situations, that is really, that's tougher to cover than you're running vertically upfield. When you're running across, boy, it's tough. No timeout being called, and Danny White over at the sideline. With a conference with uh, Tom Landry there, and you see uh, Dick Nolan. You see that card they're looking at? All their offensive plays are on that card by situations. First and 10, second, seven to 10, third and long. You know, it's uh, nickel pass offense against their uh, nickel defense, those kind of things. And very few things are pulled out of your hat at this time. You look at your game plan and, and go to work. Let's give you a rundown on uh, what we'll have for you next week on CBS Sports. NFL action next Sunday, the early game. Chicago at Tampa Bay, the Giants at Philadelphia, or Detroit against Green Bay, depending on what part of the country that uh, you'll happen to be. And the uh, late games will be Minnesota and Pittsburgh. Dick and I will be in Anaheim. That should be a good one. The Redskins and the Rams, and then San Francisco and Atlanta. I think the Redskins have got a pretty good test out there. They will be. Two one-back attacks. Of course, the Rams uh, aren't playing today, but it'll be great football. I can't wait to see the darn thing. It all starts with the NFL today, next Sunday. White has had his conference. Cowboys first and ten, crowd chanting defense. Cowboys now with just one timeout left here in the first half. 55 seconds. First down at the 16. This is Dallas' deepest penetration of the entire first half. Springs in motion. White, good protection. Six points. Touchdown, Drew Pearson. Boy, that guy. Drew Pearson. Here he is. This man-to-man -man coverage. They get a pretty good rush on him, but it's picked up late. You can see the lineman pulling out to pick up people. Now you see the ball coming right to the screen. One-on-one -on -one right there. Man-to-man. -man. Bird reaches for the ball. Just misses it. Pearson, great concentration. Locks it up. Touchdown. Experience. Fifth touchdown of the year. Pass right on the money to Pearson. He needs seven receptions now to tie the great Don Hudson and be the number 14 all-time receiver in the history of the National Football League. That was his third catch of the day. Stepped in to try the extra point. No good. Septien misses the extra point. He slipped in the mud. Chalked that one up to the mud because he slipped as he tried to plant his foot. And that makes it a 14-6 ball game. Now we have a nice ground level shot. Springs going in motion. Look at all the movement by the defense. People switching. Sometimes you create mistakes by doing that. Now Danny looking to his left fire is a timed post pattern. Right in the hole between defenders being covered one on one by Bird, number 22. Pass right on the money. Now watch uh, watch the rush here on Septi and see if he slipped or was it the rush? Nah, the rush doesn't bother this guy. The rush doesn't bother. Just a bad kick. 
just a bad. Didn't pitch. look like he slipped till afterwards. No, he didn't slip either. He just didn't hit it well. You know, that's the disadvantage for the sidewinder because, you know, you come across, you come at the angle, you get that left foot down on the outside of the foot. It, it takes better footing and a firmer ground to really get, make good contact coming off that left foot than it does a straight on kicker. That was his second extra point miss of the year. You know, he missed three field goals the last time he kicked in this stadium against the Chargers. High kick and short. Coming down to the far sidelines and fielded by Miles McPherson, number 24, who returned it to the 25. Speaking of scores, as we were a moment ago, Washington putting it on the Giants, 16 to three. That game has now reached halftime at the, the Giants are another team that won't hang it up. They'll battle you. San Francisco, surprisingly, uh, they bounce back after they lose to Miami last week. And at halftime, they're in front of New Orleans, 17 to nothing. That was, of course, just a tease of uh, coming events at halftime. Brent Nerve will give you a complete rundown. Highlights, scores, everything coming up. 44 seconds away. Well, the Chargers, not content, not going to sit on this lead. Off to Muncie. And down to the 46 yard line. Muncie just ran away from Anthony Dickerson, the Cowboy linebacker. You're going to see this delay crossing pattern. He'll appear at the left side of your screen late. Watch it now. See, there's stunts being picked up. Now, watch him. There he, he checked down late, coming out of the backfield. Now it's a foot race, and he can really run. That's Dick, Dickerson, 51, a linebacker chasing him. Here's a great big 240 pound guy that can run faster than linebackers. 27 yards on the play. It'll be a first down for the Chargers at the 47-yard line. We get back to play San Diego using one of his timeouts as Luther comes over to the sidelines. I must they're referring to their game plan, Frank. Talking, you have a lot of minds right there. That's the right. guy on the right, Dave Levy, offensive line coach and coordinator. Of course, Fouts with his back to us. Coriel to the left. There's free print. And then the er Ernell Durden right up there to the right. All those brains making a decision. Something else we want to remind you about coming up at halftime, the bowl picture. The college bowl picture with the results yesterday figured in and things are beginning to settle in a bit. And uh, Brent Nerve will have the latest on that for you. Clock is run down to 31 seconds. Left to play in the first half. First and 10 for the Chargers at the Dallas 47. This game has also reached halftime. Denver leading the Raiders 10 to 6. Elway's got him ahead, huh? Our score, the Chargers 14, the Cowboys 6. Luther, quick throw to join it. Inside the 40 to the 35. And keep in mind that Ralph Pernishka has pretty good range. Dallas didn't have a defender lined up in the man in the slot joiner, and he just popped it to him real quick. Watch this. See, there's no defender right on in there. They were going just playing like a prevent defense, and they just popped it to him. Probably an audible call. Now watch him, just boom. Now get it out there. That a babe. See, nobody out there. Probably either a side adjustment made by the quarterback and the receiver or an audible call. Last time Dallas was here in regular season was back in 72. They led at halftime of that game, 28 to nothing. And John Hadle came back in the second half and threw four touchdown passes. Dallas eventually won it 34 to 28, but the defense was shell-shocked. And I remember getting on the Cowboys charter oh, that yeah. night, and Larry Cole was in the back of the charter and uttered the classic line to the, the pilots saying, get this thing off the ground before they score again. <laughs> hey, that Larry Cole, he could do it. I really respected him. He was a great football player. And maybe not the all-pro caliber guy, but he really, I felt, was a real leader of that defense. And when he left, I, I really felt that they lost a little bit of that kind of character and commitment uh, from a player of, of his stature. Very successful home builder in the Dallas area right now. All First those guys ten. do well. Chargers at the 35, but I think they'd settle for a field goal, wouldn't they? Oh, you bet they would. And that guy's a pretty good kicker, you know. He's one of the best ever. Benerska's longest kick this year has been 51. Luther, under pressure, gets it away. Nice catch, Muncie. 30, 20, and out of bounds at the 17. Not only does he run well, but that was a nifty catch. That was the, exactly the same play that they ran a few minutes ago, a crossing delay pattern, see? And he brings that guy, now see him come underneath him right there. They actually picked off the defender that was running one-on-one -on -one with him. Which, now watch him sort of direct, try, you know what he did? He tried to 
didn't make that defender think someone was going to block him. He tried to make Michael Downs think there was a guy going to come and block him by pointing to him. Guy's got the hands of a wide receiver. Oh, yes. He was a great receiver. At California, I've seen that guy dominate a football game. One time against USC, he beat him by himself. 17 yards on the play. Look at it from the end zone. He's going to appear to, again to the left side of your screen. See him right there? Sneak out of there. And his defender got picked off by the other receiver. I don't know if that's legal. See him? He tried to bluff him. But tried to make Downs think someone was going to block him. That advances the ball to the 18-yard line. Muncie has had a workout here in the first half of play. He's rushed it 10 times for 22 yards. He's caught three for a total of 53 yards. Bernersk 16 seconds left in the half. Bernerska's already made four for five at this distance this year. And overall, his career, he's 72% successful from this distance. So there's a good chance he'll get three points. Now, that was the last time out of the charges. Would you run another play here? Would you kick the field goal right now? I'd run another pass play. That's apparently what they're going to do because Luther has just ducked into the huddle. You want to keep it near the middle of the field or where it is right now, it don't you? It used to be a bigger factor with a hash mark, but not, not as big a factor anymore. I don't think they're as concerned about the, the middle of the field as, unless it's a real muddy spot. The big thing now is an intelligent type pass. Don't force the football. Hold a hand in motion. Luther back to throw it. Intended for West Chandler at the two-yard line. Defended against by Everson Walls. That and that will be enough. Goal. That's enough, says Coriel. Let's uh, go for the field goal at this point. And here comes Panerska. Let's Ooh. see if he can go ahead and kick at his normal percentage rate. Four for five this year. 72% in his career from this distance. Ten out of 18 on the year. AFC Pro Bowl kicker last year. In his seventh year, you know the history of Rolf Panerska. Been a courageous come from behind situation coming back from illness. This attempt will be from 37 yards away. Luther to hold. High snap. Got it up. Far enough. It is good. Cowboys find themselves down by 11. Seems just a few moments ago, I was saying with the score 14 to nothing, you think the Chargers will run out the clock and just keep it on the ground? And we've had, what, two or three scores since then? I watched them run through their two-minute offense the other day. You know, they're really efficient with it because they throw the ball all the time anyway, and the only thing that really changes is the use of the clock and getting out of bound principles. But they go ahead and run the regular offense. But the thing that they did right there is they regain the psychological... Excuse me, can't even talk. They regains the, the psychological edge coming back out at halftime. Rather than going in having given up a touchdown, they come out having gained a field goal. And there's where teams have, have broken down against the Cowboys in the past. Cowboys, of course, make the playoffs this year. It'd be the ninth straight year. That would be an NFL record. You know, Don Coriel has uh, had some pretty impressive assistant coaches on his staff who have gone on to be head coaches. Oh, yes. John Madden, for one. Hey, he's number one now in our business. John Madden. Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs. Jim Hannafin. Ray Perkins. Ray Perkins. Rod Dowhauer, head coach at Stanford for a while. He's turned out a lot of people. You know the other thing about John Coriel? He has always given the credit for his success to his assistant coaches. You, I Many times, personally, I said, Don, what are you doing in this? And this? And he said, hey, you'll have to ask so-and-so coach. He's the guy that's really doing it. And, you know, of course, that isn't true. Eight seconds left to play in the half. Little, uh, keep it on the ground type kick here. Yeah. See if they do it. Yep. Yeah. Does exactly that, trying to prevent the return. Cosby reaches us at the 30-yard line and goes out of bounds at the 37 with three seconds to go. The last scoring drive by the Chargers, and Muncie, of course, the key man with the receptions, covered 61 yards, and it took him just 41 seconds to get there. Luther is 13 out of 22 for 192 yards against the Cowboys, and he's thrown just one interception. So he's kept that interception rate down, which uh, really killed him here in these three no games question. that he started. You know, I hate to jinx the Chargers, but I just know these Cowboys so well, and you just cannot write them off. That's all there is to it. I, I expect this second half to be one real shootout. Tony Hill to the left side. This will be the last play of the first half. And the Cowboys running it. Ron Springs carries the 24. That 
is the end of the first half. Take one of Brent Musburger's lines. The Cowboys probably got the Chargers right where they want them, right behind again for the 11th time in 11 games. What do you look for from Dallas in the second half? Well, I think they're going to come out and throw the ball a little bit deep because San Diego's playing a lot of man coverage, and it's not an ideal situation to run, especially a back like Dorsett that does a lot of cutback stuff. I think the wide receivers will attack those single coverage uh, deep corners right now and get after them maybe on post patterns and, and corner type patterns. Well, very muddy field here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Wasn't helped by the halftime show with the band uh, making things even muddier. That could work to the advantage of the San Diego Chargers. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Capacity crowd on hand here at Jack Murphy Stadium. Anticipating the second half kickoff with the San Diego Chargers surprisingly in front of the Dallas Cowboys, 17 to 6, and Septien will kick it off. I don't think the Chargers are surprised that they're uh, leading this football game because in talking to their players in the locker room and talking to their coaching staff, uh, he just leered. In talking to him, all these guys feel that they're a lot better football team and they were going to start proving it today. Bruce Laird is a 12-year veteran, played with the Baltimore Colts. They picked him up here last year and he's done a great job this year returning kickoffs. Averaging 23-3, Frank. Wind blows the ball off the tee. 23.3 yards a return at 33 years old. That is outstanding. You, know, you usually run out of gas back there before that time. Cowboys have outscored their opponents in the second half, 167 to 69. So Dallas certainly not through. That's Blair, 10, 15, across the 20, 25, out to the 28-yard line. And again, it was Bill Bates who made the stop for the Cowboys as we look at the halftime statistics. You know, an edge for Chargers there in the passing department. Dallas with a slight edge and rushing, but neither team running it well. No, neither team running it well, but the key stat that doesn't show is the fact that the Cowboys only converted two out of thir uh, eight third down situations. That's 25%. That's way off their norm. That's credit goes to the Charger defense. First and 10 for the Chargers at their 27. Luther 13 out of 22 for 192 yards, and Muncie is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Randy White, number 54 on the bottom of that pile for the Dallas Cowboys. And I imagine if uh, Tom Landry uh, was a man who raised his voice, he probably would have raised it at this particular halftime, don't you? Yes, but I'm not so sure it's the fault of the Cowboys that they're behind right now. You know, Tom's sitting there right now talking to Danny about throwing the ball, I'm sure, in situations that are going to come up in the second half. It's the Chargers have played so well. Now let's see if they can keep doing that in the second half. Second and 10 from the 27. They have not had the big pass rush thus far. They're coming this time with the blitz. He gets it away. And this time over the head of Muncie, who is being trailed by Mike Higman over on the far sideline. Here we have a nice shot of a young offensive tackle, number 75. See him sitting there right in the middle of the screen, taking on two tall Jones. Number 72 gets up underneath, does a nice job of pass protecting him. Andy, really a fine young man, just a second-year player. His dad's seriously ill right now in Parma, Ohio Hospital. And, and Andy is really concerned about his dad right now and, and wanted us to say that uh, God bless him. Parma is a suburb of Cleveland. Third and ten. Pressure this time on Luther, but he completes the pass nevertheless, and they should have enough for the first down. Charlie Joyner making the catch at the 38-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. Here's a big thing is the fact that in the first half, they converted 58% of their third down situations. Here's a nice look at him step up in that pocket, really in and out, inside and outside coverage right there on him. Well done by the receiver. Here's Gissinger again, keeping him out. He's battling. See him just run him around to the outside. That's it. Keep him there. Keep him there. Look at too tall jump. Too tall had two block passes in the first half. That is a first down for the Chargers. Joyner just got enough for the first at the 37. Muncie the lone setback. Luther over the middle. Joyner 45 down to the Dallas 40. First down. 15-year veteran of the number nine. All Joyner jumps receiver. around Dickerson. See him jump around. Now it's his own defense. See, nobody covering him man-to-man. -man. He finds the little hole. Nice time throw. Stuck it in there. Brody trying to get to him. Can't get there soon enough. First down. They're moving the ball. Well, we got a flag. They may not move it that far. Let's see what the call is here. Cowboys are 
moving back, indicating that the penalty would be against them. Matt Haggerty, the referee, will let us know about it as soon as uh, he gets it figured out here. Well, Joyner is amazing. You know, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's played now in 141 straight games. I'll throw one at you, Frank. He has 9,585 yards receiving. Which is equivalent to five and a half miles of running pass patterns. So illegal use of hands against the Cowboys. It'll be a first down for the Chargers at the Dallas 40. You know also, which is outstanding, Frank, he hasn't missed a game since 1973. He started in the league with Houston, then went to Cincinnati, and eventually wound up out here. And he's found himself a home. That's Joyner in motion. Luther. Sideline throw to Chandler. Gets away from one man. Inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. Anthony Dickerson, number 51 of the Cowboys, wound up grabbing a lot of air. Watch it. I bet this guy's a great dancer. Watch him. It's a little quick hitch. Watch him. Just the ball's coming to him quickly. Joyner running people out. Anthony Dickerson, 51, comes and tries to make the play. Look at him, Jack. Cha cha. There he goes. He missed him. I'll bet he's really good on the dance floor. Pretty good moves there, I'd say. <laughs> Pick up on the play of five. It'll be second down five for the Chargers of the Dallas 35. This opening drive in the second half, very important to San Diego's confidence. As they lead it 17 to 6. They move smartly downfield. Muncie cuts back inside the 35 to about the 32-yard line. Of course, uh, Cowboy fans very interested in what the Redskins are doing, and right now they're doing very well for themselves as they lead the Giants in the third period 19 to 3 should Washington win and Dallas lose we'd have a tie for first place in the NFC East and that's a game that uh, Dick and I are looking forward to next month at Texas Stadium maybe the big game of the year on CBS huh? right third down one needed for the first down at the 32 Luther, plenty of time again, delivers. And Holahan, the tight end, inside the 20 to the 18. Here you see the motion man coming across the formation. Third and run, not normally a passing down. Now a little delayed rollout. He was at wingback position, out there in that zone. Bang, he picks it off, protects the football intelligently. First down, third and one in the zone. That's twice. That's, that's at least the second time. 13-yard pickup. First down at the 18-yard line. Now, the Cowboys, uh, you know, have been known for coming from behind, but you wonder how deep a hole you can dig here. Too early to tell. Luther over the middle. Holohan, touchdown. from Notre Dame and it's coming right at you. How'd you like to play pass defense? Here he is, you're gonna see him coming right at you to the right of the screen. You saw the move, the motion man draw defenders with him. Here he is, now here he is, right at you. Go ahead, can you make this play? He can, all right, he beat downs one-on-one -on -one in man coverage. Here he goes, spike it over the top. Notre Dame player, high school quarterback, the only athlete out of New York State to ever be named in football and basketball. Ralph Finerska attacks on the extra point, and the crowd is delirious with 11.31 left to play in the third period. Happy time right now on the San Diego bench. Young Pete Holohan, former Notre Damer, has caught four passes for 77 yards, really getting a shot today because Eric Sievers, the normal backup tight end to Kevin Winslow, has had some ankle problems. And his folks are here to see him for the very first time in San Diego from New York State. He's putting on a show for mom and dad. He's doing a good job. I'll tell you, he's doing a good job. That quarterback, Ed Luther from St. Paul High School. Gary Allen at the 10 for the Cowboys. Back to the 15, 20. Allen is out to the 25-yard line. You make it a million a year, you can afford those tackles. He's a poor guy. I wonder if he's a captain for a loan. First and 10, Cowboys at the 25. Dorsett is cracked. 
as he hits the line of scrimmage after the 27. Now you see Rick Ackerman, number 91, whips the center. There was a little influence block, and it was trap blocked by the wing, number 20 back in there, but it didn't do any good. Did you see Ron Springs coming in there? Number 20 came in and blocked the nose on an influence type play. It's a little mismatch, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's the way they rank Cowboys offense, fifth against the Chargers defense, which is 23rd, but apparently growing up in a big hurry. Second and eight. White over the middle to Cosby. Very close to the first down at the 35. They shove him back a full five yards. Lyndon King, number 57, and Mike Green, number 58. And it looks like Danny White almost lost his jersey in the process. Cosby did a real nice job of coming back underneath on a little delay pattern. It was cleaned out by another receiver, and then he came right back underneath in that zone, but he missed the first down. Or it appears to me that he's missed the first down. I like to say it's close enough for measurement. There's old Mr. Green. You know, that guy was a B student in college. He was a very fine student. And probably that's why he's learned so quickly the linebacker position in San Diego. Made the first down. First and 10 for the Cowboys at the 35. Bringing you up to date on the big game of the NFC West this afternoon. 49ers pouring it on the Saints 24 to nothing. 49ers are really a fine football team, and of course they've got the great offensive coach in Bill Walsh, and you know they can put points on the board, and their defense must be playing super today, though. That's Pete Hollihan. It's been a big factor in the success of the Chargers offense. This is his best day ever in a Charger uniform. Absolutely nothing there. Ball was fumbled after the play had been whistled dead as Ron Springs took the handoff and was stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Big hands, Johnson, number 79, picking up the fumble. That was a very unusual offensive play. Now you watch the quarterback. He's going to reverse pivot around. See the line flex there again, trying to take the edge off the pass rush. Reverse, see that Martin Lyman pulling in front of there? Big delay up underneath, but it didn't work. It didn't work. Penetration. Who is that? Billy Ray Smith. Great penetration. He's playing real well in front of his pop today. Second and 11. Cowboys at their 34-yard line. Dorsett. Lone setback. Fake to Tony. White with all the time in the world. Trying to hit Cosby, who slips and falls. The pass is incomplete. For an NFL update, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Brent here in San Diego, it's 24 to 6. The Chargers leading the Cowboys, who are known, of course, for their come-from-behind talents. But they've shown no signs of it so far. It's third down, 11. Here in the third period, 9.21 left. Dallas from its 34. White, wide open at the sideline as puts Johnson for the first down at the 50 and goes out of bounds near the Charger 45. Ken Green, number 28 on the stop. Now you'll see that he's in the slot there. He's coming off. Now you watch the defender number 20. He slips and falls down on the cutout. See him now? Now watch him fall right there in the mud. That band didn't help it any, you know, by going out there at halftime. Yeah, all over that muddy field. You figure this, this uh, favors uh, the Chargers more than the Cowboys' sloppy field? Well, it favors the, the pass receiver over the pass defender, not either team. Though I think maybe the Chargers might be a little more physical size-wise. Well, with Muncie in their run of the ball, the Cowboys yeah. have nobody that size. Sir. No. First down at the 46 of San Diego. White working the sidelines to Tony Hill, and Hill gets a couple of extra yards as he moves it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Boy, the Redskins uh, maybe have heard that the Cowboys are trailing, and uh, they have got themselves in high gear at the Meadowlands as they lead the Giants 26-3. You know, Joe Gibbs made the comment to me a couple weeks ago when we were in Washington, D.C. He said, you know, the big game for us coming up is that Charger-Dallas Cowboy game. He did say that to us. Raiders leading Denver in the third period of play. You think that Gibbs and Coriel may have talked a little this week? Well, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard to really get some help from another fella, even no how much he likes you, because you're both doing different things with the ball. Second down, three from the 40. Dorsett on the sweep. Gets a block, 35, 30. 
And out of bounds at the 26. That's another first down. And for an NFL report, once again, let's go back to Brent in New York. So, big day for the Smurfs at the Meadowlands. Washington moving along in quest of its ninth victory of the year against two losses, and those two losses have been by a margin of one point. Cowboys, on their first offensive possession of the second half, have reached the 27-yard line of the San Diego Chargers, first and 10. Dorsett trying to cut inside, running hard, gets to the 25, and pays the price after picking up a couple of very tough yards. Lyndon King, who has been very evident this afternoon, number 57. He leads all linebackers in the NFC in sacks. First, Vernon Maxwell of the Colts leads all linebackers. He's really still learning to be a linebacker, starting out as and drafted out, out of Colorado State as a strong safety. They even tried him a little bit at tight end. Second and eight. White, 19 out of 30 for 174 yards. Double coverage on the two outside receivers, right? Big hole. Springs down to the 10. First down. See, that's the disadvantage of the double coverage on the two wide uh, receivers. You you lose your safeties to force inside and help make that tackle. See that? Watch, boom, nice trap play right there. Look at that running ability right there. Laird, number 28, misses it. Now he comes over and cleans him off. Another defender. Carl really Spratley. a nice trap play there. A tra nice trap block. Springs with another busy afternoon. Seven carries for 36 yards. He's actually got five more yards rushing than does Dorsett. And in addition, he has caught five passes for 12 yards. So it is now first and goal to go with the ball smack on the 10-yard line. Fumble by Springs, who falls on it. At the line of scrimmage for no gain. You know, Dallas this year has been a good football team, obviously, but also a lucky team in the sense that it has faced St. Louis without Neil Lomax, the Eagles twice without Montgomery, the Saints without Rodgers, Minnesota without Kramer, and so on. Let's see if we can see the exchange problem right here. There was really not a difficult handoff. Little counter step by the fullback team. Now he's going to reach there and give it to him, and it slipped right through his hand. Maybe a little mud on the ball, something that slipped right through the pocket made by both arms and hands of the running back, Ron Springs. Loss of a yard back to the 11th. Second and goal. Cowboys need a touchdown badly. White. That's it. Intended for Dorsett. Looks well, like pass interference. Lyndon King, number 57, was covering Dorsett. No call. It'll be third and goal from the 11th. This is a tough throw down here. Now, it looks like they're going to go to their shotgun or three-receiver offense right now. They take King out, and they've also uh, taken the other linebacker out. Mike Green. No shotgun. Staying in the regular formation. Third and goal from the 11. White blitz. Sack back around the 20. White never had a chance, and now White is hot. White is getting it on with number 50. Breaking Carlos up, guys. Bradley. Players from both benches coming out. Louis Kelcher trying to get in the middle of it. Come on back here, Louis. See how they rule this. Penalty on both guys. You watch that. Woody Lowe, number 51. Came blowing through there, along with Carlos Bradley on the blitz. And White never had a shot. And Danny White is hot. Unsportsmanlike conduct, offense and defense. You call that one. Somewhere the protection broke down. You see number 51 is going to be dogging in there. See 51 right there? There he is. He hits him in the back. He's got him down. Now, right there, I think the play is dead. If that play is dead. I don't blame I don't blame Danny for getting a little upset. Play was over. 
White and Woodrow low getting into it for the Chargers. Of course, the foul occurred after the sack. So the sack, in effect, counts. So there'll be a loss of nine on the sack. Takes it back to the 20. And they'll play it from there. And this will be fourth down. Woodrow low, veteran linebacker from Alabama. And Septien will be attempting a 38-yard field goal. 81% successful from this distance. It's good. Things getting interesting here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. Stay with us. We'll be back. In Here's our situation here in the third period. Still a lot of time to go. Don Coriel had an interesting discussion with Woody Lowe, his linebacker, who got into that squabble with White. Well, Coriel appreciates intensity, but he doesn't want Woody Lowe thrown out of the football game because he's his best outside linebacker, and he doesn't have anybody to replace him, at least that caliber. So he's telling him to maintain his poise. Septian kicking off. Laird is the deep man. This one comes down to the far side, going to Ernest Jackson, the rookie from Texas A&M. And he is smothered inside the 20-yard line. Everson Walls, number 24. Down covering for the Dallas Cowboys. NCAA football on CBS next weekend. This is the lineup of regional games. Washington State and Washington, perhaps uh, the biggest, because the Robo, a Rose Bowl could be riding on it for the Huskies. West Virginia with its great quarterback, Jeff Hostetler against Syracuse. Then Duke and North Carolina. And Tennessee and Kentucky at 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday. Now each team has scored on its first possession of the second half. The Chargers a touchdown, the Cowboys a field goal. Luther going to Muncie. He had Charlie Joyner wide open on the near sideline. About 15 yards downfield. Didn't see him. There's White on the sidelines trying to compose himself a little bit, talking to Butch Johnson and Al LeVan, who is the Cowboys' backfield coach. And of course, Boy, he's a fine coach. That Al LeVan's a real fine coach. In fact, I tried to hire him myself one time. Did you? Stanford? Uh, yeah, he was at Stanford, but he was working for a good friend of mine, and I didn't feel right trying to hire him away from him. Cowboys are making this guy look like an all-pro. Luther, confidence building as the game goes along. Muncie on the carry. Slides across the 20 out to the 22-yard line. Picked up about four, and Mike Hagman, number 58, making the Boy, stop. what a great shot this is of the offensive right guard. Watch the right guard, number 67. He's going to pull to his left. Now watch him. 280 pounds. Here he is. Now watch him trap this guy. Bang, nice. Look at that hole. Beautiful hole up inside, but filled nicely by the linebacker. Mike Hagman, number 58. But boy, that was a nice track block by Ed White. That is a great veteran line that the Chargers have, with the exception of Kissinger, who is the only young player succeeding Russell Washington. A lot of experience on this football team. Most of it on offense. Third and six. Winslow trying to pick up the first down, and he does. And Dan Bounce is leading the cheering down to the sideline. Pretty good individual effort. Again, this is the advantage of a man weighing 240 pounds. Good rush coming up inside there. He gets it out there, one-on-one -on -one situation. Now that guy's going to tap him. Look at him get his shoulder down there real quick. On, and that base is a heck of a tackler. He's given yeah. away about 50 pounds. Oh, I know it. He might have picked somebody off right there. See him trying to brush it? No, he didn't pick it. That was a legal play. But again, good hitting, but you're hitting a big, strong man. First down for the Chargers trying to play ball control here from the 28, and Luther airs it out. Intended for Chandler and almost intercepted. He overthrew Chandler by 15 yards and Dennis Thurman. Latest college uh, football at San Jose State was a fourth-round draft pick in 1980. up the first down at the 39-yard line. An 11-yard pickup on the play. Muncy gets two, maybe three yards to the 42-yard line. Yeah, I think they actually really did make an effort to get to Elway, but it just didn't work out. Second and eight, we get a flag. Charges may have been offside as the pass is thrown behind Chuck Muncy. I think or either offside or illegal movement. 
I talked to Gil Brandt of the Cowboys uh, this morning, and we talked about uh, Billy Ray Smith. And there was a lot of rumors going around Dallas that the Cowboys were trying hard to move up in the draft so they'd have a shot at Billy Ray Smith. And he said they did talk to Denver seriously, but never really talked to San Diego because they thought San Diego was going to uh, take away. Yeah. Well, I saw Gil this morning, too, but I didn't talk to him about that. But he was concerned about... Ready nine, offense, decline, third down. He was more concerned about today's game. He didn't want to talk much about uh, what happened at the draft. Very intelligent young man, Billy Ray Smith, All-American at Arkansas. Having a little bit of trouble, he said, uh, adjusting to the pass defense duties of a linebacker in the pros. He used to rush the passer all the time. Well, they have him down today, rushing him as a defensive end, some in the nickel. Third down eight, big play for the Chargers in this drive. From their 42, Luther. Chandler caught it out of bounds. Incomplete. First punt of the second half for Buford. Gary Allen is deep. This one angles for the far sidelines. And Allen tried to catch it and not go out of bounds. But did at the 17. And the Cowboy offense will put it in play from there with two minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the third period. With Dan Fouts out, it would have to be considered one of the big upsets of the year if the Chargers hang on. First and 10. Cowboys at their 17. Springs gets it up to the 20 to the 21-yard line. San Diego's done a good job with ball control, keeping the ball away from the uh, Cowboy offense. They've done a real good job of that. And, you know, they haven't turned the ball over except the one time and it did cost them. But they're doing a good job. And the other thing they're doing nicely on defense is they're stringing those plays out, stringing them out and forcing them to the sideline and not letting those great running backs get upfield vertically. Something that we might keep in mind as we head into the final period. Cowboys have outscored their opponents in the second half by a pronounced margin, and it's even more so in the final quarter, which we'll show you shortly. Second down, seven from the 21. Cowboys operating from the muddiest part of the field. White trying to set it up, does so nicely, and Drew Pearson pulls it down at the 29-yard line. That is good for the first down. You can see Drew Pearson now. He's going to be the receiver singled up on Danny Waller's number 23. Now see him. He's working to the inside. Now he plants and rolls to the outside. Look at him slip. You can see how soft the field is. That's why the receiver has the advantage. He knows where he's going. It's got to be a great thrill, I would think, for Waller's to play on the same field with Drew Pearson as a youngster. He probably watched him. Uh... Man, I don't know if Drew would appreciate that, <laughs> putting him in that old age category. Well, he's getting along, but still, like Charlie Joyner, I look for the Cowboys Doing to go deep job. for the ball here pretty quick, Frank. First and 10 at the 29. On the delay, Dorsett gets it out to the 35, picks up six yards on the play. It'll be second down four for an NFL Today report. Once again, let's go to Brent in New York. That's all we've seen is Redskin touchdowns out of that game. 33 to three now as Riggins gets one. Second and four. Dallas. From the 35, that should be good for another first down. Everything being in order, Ron Springs pulls down yet another pass. His sixth reception of the day, which will make him the Cowboys' top receiver. When he caught his first pass today, he passed Preston Pearson as the leading Cowboy receiver among running backs for catches in a single season. The old record was 46. You know, the fullback is a little better receiver because of the tight end on his side of the ball more often than not. You know what I mean? The linebacker has to concern himself with a tight end before he gets involved with that linebacker, or rather the fullback, and it makes it a little tougher. First down, Cowboys at their 46. 20 seconds left in the quarter. Tony Hill. Ralph I'll bet Springs. you any money that Ron Springs turned his eyes and started to run and took his eyes off the ball too soon. Now watch him. He's going to get it. One, two, three, four, five. Plant. Look for the ball. Now watch his hat. Let's see if he turns and runs. No, he didn't. He didn't. Sometimes they turn their hat too soon and become a ball carrier before they receive the football. That he just dropped it. Should have made that catch even though it was behind him. Is that what you coaches call the stem? Yeah. Well, the stem is that the distance or the... We'll get to it here in a second. <laughs> Put me on second and ten. Cowboys at their 46. That 
is Tony Hill that time, and that's good for a first down at the 41 yard line. Play the Chargers playing a little soft in that secondary. They're playing, they're playing a lot softer right now than they were in the first half, and I think it's due to the footing. Now you see him take off, see him right there now. Running down there, nice stem. Now I'm talking about the stem is the length of the vertical push upfield. Roll it out, no defender showing. See, he was giving them a little more room. Tony Hill, number eight, running a pattern on Gilbert that never appeared on your screen. He's concerned about that deep one now. I just learned something new. Hanging around coaches, what a stem is. Well, the stem is the dip from the initial alignment position to the breaking point downfield. I got you. First down, Dallas at the San Diego 41. White, quick throw, Boston. Inside the 40, out of bounds at the 36. You know, again, that was not a legal formation. That flanker back was on the line of scrimmage, making the tight end an Ill uh, not eligible as a receiver. It was not called, but it should be called. That'll run the clock down to four seconds left to play in the quarter. Let's uh, take a look at it here, see if we can spot it in that formation. That tell you anything at all? Yeah, well, you can see the flanker back is not a yard behind the tight end or the ball. He's lined up even with him. You can see that. Do you see the tight end up there? They're even. They were lined up parallel. And you got to be careful. I've seen receivers get called for less than that. Second and five. Last play of the quarter. Dallas at the San Diego 36. Springs. Maybe a yard. Run to the 35. And that'll do it for the quarter. With Dick Vermeil, this is Frank Lieber at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego as we head into the final period. With the Chargers leading the Cowboys 24 to 9. Dallas third and four at the 35 of San Diego. Out of the shotgun, a lot of pressure. Tony Hill still in bounds. That's a touchdown. Five yards on the touchdown. This is really a nice play. Actually, the defender did a good job, but he didn't knock him down when he went for the ball. He went for the interception. See him drive for the interception, misses it. Tony does a nice job of staying in bounds, heading up field. Now he's going to start celebrating before he gets there. Look at this. You know, this guy has been scoring this year a touchdown every fourth pass he catches. That's the rookie, Danny Walters, from Arkansas that he beat. That is White's second touchdown pass of the afternoon. Septien on to try the extra point. Great example of good body balance on contact. Didn't knock him off balance. He regained it quickly, and up the sideline he goes. Glenn Carano, the Cowboys' forgotten man at quarterback, will hold. Septien missed the first one, but drills this one through. Tony Hill, whose 35-yard touchdown reception brings the Cowboys to within eight of the San Diego Chargers. 14.53 to go, and that missed extra point by Septiem looms rather large. Bruce Laird feels this one at the 5, back to the 15, 20. Hit at the 30-yard line, really blasted. And again, things get a little testy down there on the playing field. There's a second altercation we have had. Someone tried to wrestle the ball free, I'm sure, under the pile, but it will remain in possession of the Chargers. Well, we've got more of the same upcoming next week. Depending on where you happen to be, you'll see one of these games, the early games next week. Chicago and Tampa, the Giants in Philadelphia, and Detroit at Green Bay. And if you don't see one of those three, you'll see one of these three. Minnesota and Pittsburgh, Washington and the Rams, or San Francisco, Atlanta. Some good football games in that schedule next week. Well, we're coming down the stretch. Tom Landry. You know, if I was going to hire a coach to coach my football team in the fourth quarter, he'd be the guy. Luther, undaunted, comes out thrown again. Anthony Dickerson had six points. Don't Dickerson it had an interception. Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, it looked like he could have picked that one off. Keep in mind what the Cowboys do in the second half and focus your eyes on the fourth quarter and what Dallas has done versus its opponents in the fourth period of play. They come to play. Look, at he's sitting there chewing that gum and that mind is going quicker than that jaw right now. He's thinking of that next series and what he's going to do with the football. Second and ten. Charges at their 30. Luther out to Chandler. 
Wide to a halt at the 35-yard line across the way. Dennis Thurman and Everson Walls on the stop. Luther looks to the sidelines. The plays are signaled in by the Chargers. They are signaled in by the Chargers. In fact, they're putting a guy in front of the signal caller right now as if they think the Cowboys might have a, a little key on their signals. Now, there's the man that signals them in. Dave Levy. He's the offensive coordinator and offensive line coach. Luther this time sending Chandler wide to the left, puts Joyner in the slot, third down, five. Winslow this time brought down short of the first down, and Billy Bates of the Cowboys says, this time I got you, big fella. <laughs> Bonsai Billy. This guy, Bill Bates, you know, he's not a starter. He has 46 tackles coming into this game and three sacks. They actually tried to run a pick, and they didn't get the man. They didn't get... Bill Bates, number 40, picked off. That's what they were trying to do, Frank. You know, Bates is one of so many Cowboy free agents. Oh, I tell you, the Cowboy free agents are different than a lot of free agents. Their free agents line up and start. Their free agents line up and go to the Pro Bowl rather than line up and play a backup position. This could be a big change in momentum here. Chargers forced to punt. Return tight ball. Allen at the 20, 25, straight up the middle. No east and west for Gary Allen as he returns it to the 34-yard line. And the Dallas offense will put it in play from there. Eight-point differential in the ball game right now, which almost assures we won't have overtime. But 42 on the punt a moment ago by Burford. 14 on the return by Gary Allen. And here come the Cowboys. First and 10 at their 35. They've come from behind in nine of 10 games this year. Each of their victories. They're going to have to do it again today if they're going to pull this out. Dorsett on the pitch. That may be his biggest individual gain of the afternoon. Dorsett running hard, gets nine, takes it out to the 44-yard line. What Lyndon he was, King made the stop. What he was able to do, Frank, is what he does best, get it stretched, then cut back and head up field. You have to stop him from cutting back or he's going to beat you running the ball. Dorsett has been hobbled some this year. He's had a wrist problem. He's had ribs, he's had a knee, he's had just about everything wrong with him, but he hasn't missed a ball game. What he really has had this year is guts. <laughs> he's played tough, he's played hurt, and always played well. And the measurement would indicate that Dallas picked up enough for the first down, so they'll get it to him at the 45-yard line. So that uh, pickup of 10 actually is one short of uh, Dorsett's best run at his first carry of the day at 11. You can see there on the screen to the right, Tom Landry had his game plan card, all that printing, and sectioned off in the page. That's just different phases of his offense, all categorized so he can refer to it in those situations. First and 10, Cowboys at their 45. Danny White out to Springs. Springs close to another first down, and he may have it at the Charger 45. Andre Young, number 49, shoves him out of bounds. It's bringing up the date on the other games in progress around the league. Well, the Giants got a consolation touchdown in the fourth period against the Washington Redskins. But still 23 down with not much time left in that game. And the Los Angeles Raiders leading Denver 19 to 10. You know, the Chargers have to play the Raiders yet twice. They play them twice in the last three weeks of the season. Isn't that something? I wonder how that works out schedule-wise. That just, it seems, uh, you know, plus being in the same division, have to play them twice that close to, together just doesn't make sense to me. It does seem a little ridiculous, but uh, they've got a lot of problems when they put that schedule together. Yeah, it's more, yeah, more than I could ever conceive, I'm sure. Landry talking to his quarterback as the measurement is indicated once again. He says, Danny, make sure you throw it to a guy in a blue jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Just move it down for you. We've got a lot of time left. You know, Danny's got a record out called the Country Cowboy. I have a copy of it. It's a heck of a record. That guy can sing. That's amazing. What talent. Makes a lot of money playing football. He's going to make money singing. Nice to have something to go to, right, after your football <laughs> days are over. If he keeps throwing right-hand crosses when you get early in the ball game, he's going to be going earlier. <laughs> Cowboys did not quite pick up enough for the first down, so they're looking at second and inches from the 45 of San Diego. The give is to Dorsett. Slides outside, looks for a hole, doesn't find it. A loss on the play, back to the 47. You're talking about stringing it out. They strung it out there. That's the key to stopping him, penetration, forcing the move parallel. They're going to watch.
watch this now. You're going to see he's not going to be able to find a place to turn up. Look at Mike Green, number 58, moving along parallel to Landstrom. Big belt. Uh, look at that. Big Kelcher, number 74. Cooper, number 61, leading it up in there. They can't find a place to cut back. Look, at he wanted to come up in there. And there he is, Woodrow Lowe. Nice. Met him right at the as he tried to cross the line of scrimmage. That is uh, Mike Green, the Charger linebacker, who was shaken up. We've got a timeout. Chargers leading the Cowboys 24-16. Mike Green shaking off a few cobwebs, left the field under his own power, and I imagine he'll be back. Leading tackler as a rookie, ninth-round draft choice, and what an acquisition. You know that sometimes, you know, you can measure speed with a stopwatch. You can put all these things into a computer, but the computer doesn't measure how big heart that guy has. There's a big play for the Cowboys. Third down. They need a long yard for the first down. Danny White back to throw it. Good protection. Drew Pearson has done it a thousand times. Completes it at the 35-yard line. First down. See, they're going to make a nice fake to freeze the linebackers. Watch 54. See, he has to acknowledge run. See him acknowledge run right there. Then he sees pass. He's trying to buzz out of there and get in a throwing lane. He can't do it. First down, first down. And 54, of course, Billy Ray Smith, the Chargers' number one draft choice. So the Cowboys keep driving. You know, in the first half, it seemed like the Chargers played them a lot tighter in the corners. Yeah, they did, and they have to play them back a little bit because of that soft turf. White continues to work the sidelines. Tony Hill is the defensive back, Gil Bird. That time fell down. Hill takes the pass and runs it to the 18-yard line. Another first down. Tony Hill right there to the left of your screen coming up. He's going to run just a little six, seven-yard square out. Now I'm going to roll out. He stepped out of bounds. I don't know why the official can't see this. they got to be blind not to see this. Watch him step out of bounds right there. He goes all the way across the line. That stopped the clock. Two guys right there not doing their job that time. Nice job, Tony. Dallas with a first and 10 at the Charger 18. The clock with 10 minutes and 40 seconds left. And the Cowboys need to score twice. Door set to about the 16-yard line. Woodrow Lowe. This is a very unusual offensive play. They bring a wide receiver in motion, and he will come in and try to block the nose guard. Now watch it. He'll appear. There he is right there. That's a wide receiver. Bush Johnson is blocking Kelcher. <laughs> blocking Kelcher at 305 pounds. And Bush Johnson weighs 185, 190 pounds at best. He's got a lot of guts, I'll tell you that. Louis Kelcher, former SMU All-American, lined up in the middle at that nose tackle position. Second and eight, Dallas from the 16 of San Diego. White going for six to Springs and overthrows it. Billy Ray Smith back there covering. Ron Springs, the Cowboy, back, and it'll be third and eight. Dallas tell you? Cowboys, well... Dallas, you can see, started out slowly. They're coming on, catching up here in the second half, but San Diego still moving the ball a little bit better in Dallas until this drive. The big thing is move the ball and score. Don't move the ball and punt. Cowboys take both of their tight ends. They're free and Cosby out of the game, and now insert wide receivers. They got Hill to the left side. They got Pearson to the right. They got Coach Johnson in the slot and White in the shotgun. Big play for the Cowboys, and it is Springs at the five, and down to the three. Boy, has he had a day. Is he going to be tired tomorrow? He's done a real good job. He's isolated one-on-one. -on -one. See him to the left of your screen is the wing back coming out of the backfield. Now he's going to be picked up by Miles McPherson, number 24. Squares it out. He's got him. See, he's got him beaten on the outbreak right there. McPherson, 24, coming to make the play. Got a little late help right there. It is first and goal at the three-yard line. Eight catches for Ron Springs. In addition, he has carried nine times for 41 yards. He came into the game the fourth leading receiver in the NFC with 47. In motion, Springs stopped goal this time at the line of scrimmage. 
because they really jammed up the middle. Ackerman, number 91, who's back in there at the nose tackle, doing a job on Springs. You can see the tight end coming in, trying to make, clean up a hole out. Now watch the tight end at the left of your screen, 84. Follow him. He's going to go in and try to clean up the point of attack. Bang, he gets a block in there, but the defense, too many people to block at the same time. They couldn't get him through there. Loss of a yard on the play moves it back to the four. It is second and goal. The clock is moving with eight minutes and 25 seconds of counting. Play action pass. Play action pass. The fake, the door set. Billy Joe Dupree for the touchdown. You know that was coming. I just coached against Dallas so many times. Huh? If they don't get it on first down, they're going to come and get it off a of play action on second down. This is what I was talking about prior to the snap. Play action fake. Now see it freezes. See Mike Green, right Green. It throws him. Everyone play and run. See Dupree sneaking there to the left of your screen. Now he throws it up. That is Billy Joe's first touchdown pass this year. Pro bowler three times. Great veteran. Super athlete and a fine man. And accepting congratulations from Gary Hogaboom, among others, on the sideline. Dallas invented that play. Tom Landry invented that play. They brought the tight end from the opposite side of the formation behind the line of scrimmage. Hard to cover him that way. Except the end to bring the Cowboys to within one at 24-23. We've got a one-point game. They draw with eight minutes, 13 seconds left to play. That and the extra point, bringing the Cowboys within one. Septian's kickoff. Miles McPherson. Bought at the 20-yard line. Now take a look at the replay once again. See if you can uh, point this out. Watch to the left of your screen. See the tight end coming along behind the line of scrimmage? Very unusual play designed by Dallas, I don't know how many years ago, but I've seen him run that probably 10 times in the last 10 years. Very clever design because the pass defender loses the tight end behind the line of scrimmage like that. They lose him. Always near the goal line? Always near the goal line. I've never seen it run in midfield. Pressure now on the young San Diego Chargers. First and 10 from their 21-yard line. Luther finding Winslow open over the middle. Winslow is out to the 45-yard line. Bob Brunick, the middle linebacker, made the stop. Oh, he really got open. Well, it, it was a double zone coverage. They were doubling the outside receivers, two defenders on each wide receiver, singling up the tight end in the hole who was playing slot. Now he works around. He's going down the hole. Nice read. You see, he came right around the linebacker right there. Mike Hageman, 58. Now the other linebacker right here, Brunick, recovers and makes a play. You have to go down the hole with your receiver against that coverage, and they did it. Five catches for him now, a 24-yard pickup on that play. First down at the 47, Luther slipping and falling. Pass interference. There's a flag thrown out Everson Walls. It was pass interference, Frank. If it was, if the flag was thrown from all the way on the opposite side of the field. Well, he had the same seat that we had, and you could see it plainly from over here. It had to be called. Umpire Frank Glover, number 85, called it. The people at the point of attack sometimes can't see it because they're concentrating on the catch and other things that are going on over there. Defensive pass interference. First down. Good call. You're going to see this. I think it's clear pass interference. Now, he's going to come down. He's going to try to run a delay underneath. See him? Now he's going to whirl and go back out. See that? All right, now watch him climb his back right there. Pass interference all the way. You have no squawk, Everson. You have no squawk. That is a first down for the Chargers at the Dallas 48-yard line. One thing that's been absent today is the Cowboy pass rush. They haven't touched Luther. His jersey's still white. Yes, he's the only guy playing in the mud that has the clean jersey. Joiner in motion. Muncie looking for some running room and cracked behind the line of scrimmage back at the 48-yard line by Bill Bates. Oh, I love him. He's everywhere. I could coach him and look smart. You know, he plays like a Doberman that hasn't been fed in a week. <laughs> I mean, You're going to have to put that in your next tease, I think, there before the game. <laughs> 
four-year starter at the University of Tennessee and seeing a lot of action for the Cowboys today in this 4-0 uh, offense. Uh, he's, defensive setup. he's another great example of the computer and the stopwatch not being able to measure the true ingredient of what it takes to play something. Second and 12. Chargers back at their 49. Luther being pressured, runs out of the pocket. That looked like an old Harry Gilmer. Knocked down by Dexter Klinkscales. Dexter thought he should have had an interception. You see the way that Luther went up in the air. Remember old Harry Gilmer, the way he used to throw that jump pass? You're older than I am. Ah. I kind of remember that. But I tell you, I haven't seen that technique in a long time. That was a design delayed rollout. See how they pin the defense back to the inside? Now watch him jump. Alley, alley. Oh, there he goes. He lets it go. This was darn close to being a completed pass. Here it comes down. Look at right there. Nice defense by Dexter Plinkscale. Another free agent. Intended for Chandler, there's Dexter. Chargers come up with a third and 12 at their 49. Coriel's warming up to go in himself. Again, a big play for the Chargers, trying to keep some momentum going. As their lead has been cut to one, Luther steps up in the pocket. San Diego will be forced to punt. Cowboys trailing by one will get the football with an opportunity to try and go ahead for the very first time. And we welcome all of those of you who've been watching the Redskins beat up on the Giants today. That's the final score. Giants with a bit of a late surge there. We are in San Diego. Frank Lieber along with Dick Vermeil. We've got a one-point game with San Diego leading and punting from midfield. Great punt. Burford bounces it at the five and on into the end zone for the touchback, and we get a flag thrown down to the goal line. And this one may go against the Cowboys. It's been a rough football game. We've had a couple of altercations. And this one may go against Gary Allen, number 31, who is the Cowboy safety man. We have unsportsmanlike conduct, signal for a fair catch, and then blocking. That'll be against Dallas. That's inexperience, he, he knows that. He's been coached not to do that. That's just inexperience. This is an obvious penalty. You'll be able to see this. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 31, first down. Cowboys with Allen returning punts for the very first time. See him take a block right there, 31. See him block Ruben Henderson right there, number 20. That's not legal after you've signaled for a fair catch. And that makes a big difference because the Cowboys would have had the ball at the 20 on the touchback. Now they'll be moving with a first and 10 from their own three. Timeout. Frank Lieber with Dick Vermeil in San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium. That's our situation with six minutes and eight seconds remaining. those of you who are watching the San Francisco 49ers beat the New Orleans Saints 27 to nothing. A lot of excitement at San Diego. Dallas trailing by one with a first and ten backed up to its own three-yard line. With just over six minutes remaining, Tony Dorsett busts it out across the ten to the 13-yard line. For those of you who joined the sled, let's bring you up to date. Chargers blocked a punt in the first quarter, went ahead 7-0. They control the first half of play. Same old story for the Cowboys getting behind. They trailed 17-6 at halftime. Cowboys have missed an extra point. At the end of three quarters, it was 24-9 Chargers. Cowboys scored earlier in the fourth on a pass to Tony Hill, another to Billy Joe Dupree. Chargers have just punted, and that's where we are. Second down, less than a yard from the 13. 24-23, San Diego. Doug Cosby. Having up for the first down at the 16-yard line. For those of you expecting 60 minutes, it'll be coming up immediately following the conclusion of this exciting NFL game between the Cowboys and the Chargers, except on the West Coast, where you will see it at its regularly scheduled time. Clock is moving with five minutes to go. Tom Landry, who last week... Uh, clinched his 18th straight winning season as head coach of the Dallas Cowboys including 16 trips to the playoffs. They 
can win this one today, it'll be the best ever start for him, too, having 10 wins and one loss. They've never been 10-1 before. And the Chargers have played some inspired football. First and 10, right under pressure. Dorsett behind the line of scrimmage is dropped at the 13-yard line for a loss of four. Swarming defense. Now the San Diego Chargers has kept Dorsett and the Cowboys off guard all afternoon. San Diego Chargers went to a double coverage, doubling both wide receivers. They couldn't throw it outside, so he just laid it off to the running back. I think the Chargers are going to have to play a lot of this kind of coverage here in the final minutes. Just make sure they don't let the guy down the hole, down in between those two deep safeties. Second down, 14. Linebackers, including Lyndon King, come out. Chargers go with their nickel defense. Capacity crowd of 52,000 who haven't had much to cheer about this year roaring their lungs out. Cody Hill couldn't control it. It'll be third and 14. Fourth quarter score in the Denver Los Angeles Raiders game. Denver leading the Raiders 20 to 19. That time the San Diego Chargers came with a full red dog, bringing all the linebackers on him, and he didn't have much time to unload that thing, and it was just off the fingertips of the receiver. He had a lot of heat on him. That, of course, stops the clock with three minutes and 50 seconds to go. The crowd chanting defense. Third down, 14 from the 13. Dallas will be punting from its goal line with three minutes and 44 seconds to go. And I imagine there are a few interested folks in the Washington area who might be uh, concerned with how this thing finishes. No question, because the Washington's losses came in the conference, both losses, so they... You know, they just have to get Dallas whipped. But I'll tell you, this, San Diego's got to be careful now, Frank, like we've said in the past. Just don't celebrate. The game is not over. I see those guys jumping up and down and slapping high fives and all that stuff. Hey, the game isn't over yet. Danny White from a yard deep in the end zone. West Chandler is deep. Beautiful punch. High kick. Fair catch. Chandler at the 41 of San Diego. Timeout. Three minutes, 37 seconds left to play. And Dick Vermeil and I'll be back at Jack Murphy Stadium in just a moment. San Diego by one with 337 left to play in the game. And the Chargers have the football. Keep in mind, all of Dallas victories have come from behind this year. Each team with all of their timeouts left. First and 10 Chargers from their 42. Muncie bobbles it. Got control and winds up making a couple of yards. Ooh, that was close, Frank. He bobbled. Darner missed the exchange on a little counter step to his left end off to the right with the pulling lineman. Darn here didn't find the handle on the ball. Randy White was breathing down his neck coming in from the backside. Time increasingly a factor here as the clock running down to the 3 minute and 15 second mark. Muncie walking around with those glasses. He looks like a space cadet in there, doesn't he? He does. Cowboys have the best record of any NFC team against the AFC. 31 wins and 11 losses. They have never lost to the Chargers. Beating them twice in regular season, three times in preseason play. Second and eight. Ed Luther over the middle. It'll be close to the first down as Pete Holahan, number 88, the tight end, made the reception at the 50-yard line. Looks like they're going to be about a yard short. That was a great play by Michael Downs to pull him down from behind. Because if he'd had another step in there, he had clear room because everybody else was run out of there playing man-to-man. -man. The Chargers sending in a fresh offensive lineman who is Sam Clappen, number 77. Billy Shields looks like he hurt his shoulder. Sam Clappen, he knows how to fight. He's half Cherokee Indian, that guy. Don Coriel told us yesterday he wants to win all six of his remaining games despite the fact he's three and seven probably out of the playoffs for the first time in five years. Third and one, and Muncie has the first down at the 46-yard line. That's a big first down. Two-minute warning right now. Two-minute warning going to both benches. 
Chargers hanging on for dear life, leading the Cowboys 24-23. It is art moving. It is superb machinery. It is the best Jaguar ever built. Blending the luxury of rare walnut and soft leather with the response of a sports car and a legendary fuel-injected engine. Jaguar luxury is so complete that you don't have to spend a penny extra on options. XJ6, the best Jaguar ever built. Test drive the XJ6 sedan at your Jaguar dealer. This is the place for the real taste of beer. Look around. Pabst is the place. There's just no doubt about it. Pabst isn't beer drinking beer. I feel qualified to say that. Pabst is the place. Your good friends all around you. For the real taste of beer. And all the good times you have here. This is one place they still know how to brew beer. For the real taste of beer. Pabst is the place. As you well know, a lot can happen in two minutes of football, and that's what we've got left here at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. As Tom Landry of the Cowboys looks on, neither team has called a timeout here in the second half. Chargers have a first down at the Dallas 47 as we head back to play. Chuck Muncy in the single back. Offense, Ed Luther back to throw, and Luther is sacked for the very first time today. That's the first time. The Cowboys have dirtied his jersey, and it was Anthony Dickerson, number 51, who plowed through there, through blockers, and got the sack back at the 43. Finally got some dirt on his jersey, but that was a delayed rollout. That was not a scramble uh, because of pressure. He dropped back and then sprinted out. San Diego calls that a dash type play. Dash, D-A-S-H. Dallas will use the first of its three allotted timeouts. With a minute 54 to go, the Cowboys have two timeouts left. Next Sunday on CBS Sports, preceded, of course, by the NFL today. Chicago, Tampa Bay, Giants, Philadelphia, Detroit, Green Bay. Those three games will comprise our early games. And uh, these games, Minnesota, Pittsburgh will be an early game. Washington and the Rams in Anaheim. And Dick Vermeil and I will be there looking forward to it. And San Francisco against Atlanta. Not a doubleheader weekend, so you'll see one of those six games. You depending know, on what part of the country you happen to be. It seems like, Frank, now uh, tapering in here that the last third of the season that the games are becoming more important. The good teams are really defining who they are, and, and they're starting to meet each other. Great games coming up. Now let's take a look at the importance of this game, what it means to the Cowboys, and what it means certainly to the Washington Redskins. Dallas with the best record in pro football, leading the Redskins, but that figure now those standings include the Redskins victory over the Giants today so should the Cowboys lose they would drop into a first place tie in the NFC East and keep in mind there is one big game left between Dallas and Washington the second weekend in December at Texas Stadium you notice they haven't been playing Harvey Martin very much in there using uh, Larry Bethea in there and I've seen Jim Jeffcoat the number one draft choice in there defensive end to rush the passer the sack Minus eight for the Chargers. It is second down, 18 from their 45. Luther, little short pass over the middle to Muncy at the 50 to the 45 to the 43-yard line. And again, the Cowboys are going to call time. He's about seven or eight short of the first down. That came so close to hitting the official. Did you notice? Right, it did. Now, see, it's again, it's a little day, delay check down. Now, watch him. He's going to appear to your screen. Here, here he comes. He waits till the rushers get upfield, then he just sneaks out of the backfield. You know, the thing, someone wanted to help him up right here. They had nice tackles by Downs. And here, Dickerson finished him off. Bates comes in. Bates wanted to help him up, and Muncie wouldn't let him. He said, I'm not shaking your hand right now. Cowboys will have one timeout left. Chargers are looking at a third down and a long six needed for the first down at the Dallas 43 with a minute 45 left to play. Luther's had himself an afternoon. 25 out of 42 for 328 yards. There's old Just Dan. Just one interception. There's old Dan. Look at that beard. Well, he had a string going of 67 straight starts before he was uh, laid low by that shoulder injury, but he hopes to be back. Coming up at the conclusion of the ball game, the NFL Today wrap-up with Brent Musburger will give you a complete rundown on all the scores today, and some interesting things have happened. Once again, several upsets, and that, of course, will precede the start of 60 minutes. So we're 
Looking at that coming up in the next few minutes. Our game with a minute 45 seconds left to play and the Chargers nursing a one-point lead. Third down. San Diego needs seven for the first. At the Dallas 43 as Coriel looks on. Pressure on Luther. He gets it away. First down at the 31-yard line. A great catch by Charlie Joyner. And look at John Coriel. Not a bad catch. Beautiful shot. Beautiful route. Hell of a throw. Here's Walls. He's for Walls. Backing up there. He's single up. Well, going on it. Now, see, 18 is going to break out right here. Ball's coming right at you. You and I can catch that. Look at that. Great throw. Joyner goes out there and Aaron takes it away. Good defense. Really no defense for that one. Just well executed play. And Fouts couldn't have done a better job throwing it. Well, I'll tell you, you have to take your hat off to number 11 today, Eddie Luther. He, you know, he was a rookie three weeks ago. Now he's a veteran. Chargers have a first down at the Dallas 31. The Cowboys have uh, just a timeout left. There he is. They do it for him. Number 18, the third oldest active wide receiver behind Harold Jackson and Frank Lewis of well, Buffalo. Cowboys have just used their last timeout, so they are flat out of timeouts, and the Chargers have a first down. And uh, finally, we will get uh, what for Don Corneal will be a true running situation. I think this is a running down. <laughs> now, don't bet on it. Don't bet on it. Coriel's got to be pleased the way things have gone for San Diego this year. It doesn't surprise me. Just visiting with him, he was so intense this week. Muncie tripped up behind the line, but the Cowboys have no way of stopping the clock. Now, quickly for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Frank Raiders trail by a point. Chris Jarr, who missed an extra point, will attempt a 40-yard field goal. It is up. And it is good. With 16 seconds left, the Raiders win down, and they beat Denver. Now let's go back to Frank and Dick. Well, Brent, the crowd is on his feet here. They sense a big victory. Very grim Tom Landry. He warned all week long, don't underestimate this team, despite the injuries and despite the fact that Pounce is out of there. You know, the Cowboys have no way to stop the clock, and this one is all but history. You know, in talking with Don the other day, the executive producer of the NFL on CBS, Kerry O'Neill. Our senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. Our producer, Robert D. Stenner. Here in San Diego, our director, Joe Assetti. Thanks to those gentlemen for a fine job, along with Mitch Goldstein, Brooks Graham, Lance Barrow, and all of our friends. As the clock ticks away the final seconds of the San Diego Chargers' first ever victory over the Dallas Cowboys. And the first phone call that Don Coriel will get tomorrow will be from Joe Gibbs, I'll bet. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's over. So the Chargers take the early lead, and for the first time this year, the Cowboys can't come from behind, with the exception, of course, of their loss to the Los Angeles Raiders. 24-23, to 23, that's the final score. For Dick Vermeil, this is Frank Lieber saying so long for Jack Murphy Stadium. Stay tuned for the NFL Today wrap-up show. Right after this quick scoring update, 60 minutes will be seen in its entirety, except on the West Coast, where it will be seen at its regularly scheduled time. When is the last time you heard them chant defense out in San Diego? I didn't know they even knew how to spell the word. And now the Dallas Cowboys have slipped into a tie with the Washington Redskins. Meanwhile, San Francisco takes over first in the West, 27 to nothing, pending the outcome of tomorrow's Ram Atlanta Falcon game. And the Raiders, in dramatic fashion, you just saw 22 20 over the Broncos, so the Raiders now continue to lead the AFC West. The Washington Redskins move into that tie with the Cowboys. They pound the hapless Giants 33 to 17. The Green Bay Packers move into a tie with the Vikes in the NFC Central 29-21, the final in that game. The Pittsburgh Steelers win for the seventh straight time, the hottest team in the NFL, 24 to 13 over the Colts. And St. Louis comes back 33 to 28 over the Seattle Seahawks. The Hawks now trail the Raiders by two in the AFC West. 
Houston wins for the first time. They break that 17-game losing streak, 27-17 over Detroit. Detroit plays Green Bay next Sunday. Kansas City beats Cincinnati, 20-15 was the final in that game. Cleveland shuts out Tampa Bay, 20 to nothing. New England beats Miami, 17 to six, and the Patriots now are a force in the AFC East. And Buffalo moves into a tie with Miami, 24 to 17, they down the lowly Jets. And the Chicago Bears beat the Philadelphia Eagles for the second time this year, 17 to 14. A reminder, next Saturday here on CBS, we will determine who is going to be taking on Illinois in the Rose Bowl. All Washington has to do to get to Pasadena, beat Washington State, airtime at 3.30 Eastern Time here on CBS. And of course, coming up next, 60 minutes, you'll see it in its entirety. I'm Brent Musburger. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed the NFL today on CBS. Have a nice week, everybody. Now, United flies to Tokyo for more top U.S. business centers. United's three-class international service to Tokyo. It's truly world-class. Be sure to watch a fascinating edition of 60 Minutes, the popular television news magazine that features Mike Wallace, Morley Safer, Harry Reasoner, and Ed Bradley this evening on CBS.